Unexpectedly, the textile industry of the Su family progressed remarkably well. Upon returning, Zhang Ji breathed a sigh of relief. However, Su Chan Chan was unaware of Zhang Ji's thoughts and thanked Zhang Ji for sticking with the Su family through thick and thin, which reassured Zhang Ji. Once the Su family gets through this tough time, we can mortgage the Su family's brand and shop again, surely securing a good sum of gold coins. The position my father-in-law desires is almost guaranteed. Hearing this, Zhang Ji patted Su Chan Chan on the head, proud of the woman he had chosen. It seemed as if the one who had regrets about the marriage wasn't him, and the success of Su Chan Chan was all thanks to the dye formula provided by Shen Lang. The Su family repeatedly verified Shen Lang's formula, and whether it was exposed to the sun or washed at high temperatures, the color did not fade. The extremely beautiful purple and rainbow-colored silk alone earned a deposit of 50,000 gold coins. Thus, they dyed all their silk purple and rainbow color in pursuit of covering the debts from buying silkworm cocoons. Such bold moves not only stopped the Su family's losses, but even turned a profit. So, even though Zhang Chunhua and others advised that it was too risky, Su Chan Chan insisted on using Xin Lang's two formulas for the silk, and her delivery date was just a few days away. While Su Chan Chan was busy with preparations, Xin Lang had already prepared the next few moves for the battle for the Isle of Gold Mountain. First, he helped Jean Mulan enhance her inner strength to address the issue with Tang Yan. Jean Mulan, facing Xin Lang, clearly knew where she had been secretly hurt and was also very surprised. Xin Lang was quite proud. Not only do I know, but I can also heal the hidden injuries. However, my lady, why is your inner strength true energy purple? This surprised Jean Mulan even more. My lord, you can actually discern bloodlines with the naked eye. This caused Xin Lang to be puzzled. It turns out that in this world, inner strength true energy indeed has color distinctions. The purple energy flow Xin Lang saw represented that Jean Mulan possessed a purple talent bloodline of a very high grade, suitable for swordsmanship and battlefield martial arts. And the highest grade of bloodline is the golden bloodline, which Jean Mulan had never seen before. However, the next moment, Xin Lang saw it. Big Fool was preparing to follow the great master Zhong Chirong to the mountain to cultivate and bid farewell to Xin Lang. Xin Lang unconsciously scanned Big Fool's bloodline, and it was as if a voice echoed in his mind. Golden bloodline, Big Fool possesses a top-tier bloodline talent, which is no wonder the grandmaster took one look at Big Fool and took him as a disciple. However, Xin Lang realized that just a slight improvement in Jin Mulan's inner strength was not enough to defeat Tang Yan, so he shifted his focus to Meteor from Beyond the Heavens. Meteor from Beyond the Heavens is the treasured technique of Sky's NC Pavilion, and the Southern Sea Sword King, Li Chanxiu, also made a name for himself with this move. Ranking among the Grandmasters, even Grandmaster Zhong Chirong explicitly told Jin Mulan that she couldn't possibly be Tang Yan's opponent. Young people of this generation simply cannot defeat Tang Yan. Perhaps Big Fool might have a chance in five years, but Xin Lang still believed he could find a way to counter Meteor from Beyond the Heavens. While looking for a way to overcome Meteor from Beyond the Heavens, he accidentally learned that the martial arts heritage of this world originated from the ancient world. Thousands of years after the destruction of the ancient world, humans not only unearthed the four books and five classics, but also various martial arts manuals. These manuals were engraved in soft jade scrolls or carved into jade bricks, and just an inch thick jade brick could contain over 200 layers, each layer having hundreds of characters and two to three diagrams. Xin Lang was amazed. Wow, goodness, isn't this just like a hard drive from another world? To solve the mystery of Meteor from Beyond the Heavens, Xin Lang went through almost all the private collections in the Count's mansion. However, even after finishing the books of his cheat like ancestor Jin Zhou, Xin Lang still couldn't find a way to counter Meteor from Beyond the Heavens. Thus, Xin Lang chose to go directly to Sky's NC Pavilion. A few days later, Xin Lang and Jin Mulan arrived at their destination. He knocked on the door of Sky's NC Pavilion and shouted to the master inside, Master, we wish to enter Sky's NC Pavilion to study. A voice came from the other side of the door. Do you have an invitation from our pavilion? Of course not. So Xin Lang turned to Jean Mulan. My lady, with your high martial skills and noble status, you must be a member of Sky's NC Pavilion, right? We can enter directly, can't we? However, there was no such thing as membership, and only various academic grandmasters, like Jean Mulan's teacher Zhong Chuk, had the privilege to receive an invitation. Hearing this, Xin Lang had no choice but to resort to his last strategy, which was to accept the academic challenge of Sky's NC Pavilion. As long as one could solve any one of the ultimate puzzles, they could become a guest of the pavilion. After Xin Lang finished speaking, an elderly man came out. He sized up Xin Lang and asked, Are you sure you want to accept the challenge? Xin Lang confidently affirmed, Of course. The elder's gaze then shifted to Jean Mulan, and upon knowing that Xin Lang was her husband, he couldn't help but exclaim, It's not easy for someone as physically weak as you have survived until now. However, to accept the challenge, you need 500 gold coins. After Xin Lang took out a bag of gold coins, the elder motioned for the two to follow him. As they walked, the elder informed Xin Lang, There are three of Sky's NC Pavilion's ten great challenges left. These
these three challenges have remained unsolved for three years. Now, there are only challenges in martial arts, astronomy, and philosophy left. Which one will you choose? After some thought, Shen Lang immediately dismissed martial arts, and philosophy was out of the question too, as it was too abstract and debatable to clearly determine right from wrong. So, Shen Lang chose astronomy. Upon hearing this, the elder handed the question to Shen Lang. Shen Lang took it and looked at it with Jean Mulan, only to see five words on the paper. How big is the sun? After two minutes, the elder was about to say, don't waste time if you can't solve it. Shen Lang then stated, I've already solved it, and began to demonstrate his method. He used the pinhole imaging technique to measure the distance from this planet to the sun, which is 109 times the diameter of the sun, also confirming to Shen Lang that he was not on Earth, since the ratio on Earth is 107 times. Next, Shen Lang placed a ruler straight on the ground, and at precisely noon, measured the length of the shadow cast by a bamboo stick in the sunlight, recording it. Three days later, at noon, he planted the bamboo stick in the ground again, to measure the length of the shadow at a place 2,000 miles away. At noon when the sun shone directly, the length of the bamboo's shadow was different, with a centimeter level difference. The difference in shadow lengths between the two places, and the 2,000 miles distance, using the Pythagorean theorem, could calculate the distance between the sun and this world. Then, dividing this distance by 109, the diameter of the bright could be calculated. The elder, upon hearing this, was astounded. Such a method was unheard of and unseen before, and even more accurate than their methods. The elder's attitude immediately became respectful, inquiring the diameter of the sun from Shen Lang. 2,890,000 miles. This answer shocked the elder even more. Upon learning Shen Lang was only 18 years old, he exclaimed, too outstanding, a genius, an absolute genius. Ah, I thought this weak young man was unworthy of you, but now I feel you are unworthy of him. Since Jean Mulan did not qualify to enter Sky's NC Pavilion, only Shen Lang was led inside by the elder. The elder called for a person named Lady Yu to receive the guest. The slovenly dressed lady turned around with some displeasure, but upon seeing Shen Lang's handsome face, she disappeared in a whoosh, and when she reappeared, she had undergone a 180 degree transformation, turning into a mature lady. She boldly asked Shen Lang, Young master, which book would you like to borrow? Would you like some tea, or some pastries? Shen Lang, somewhat embarrassed, stated, I want to see Meteor from beyond the heavens. The lady smiled charmingly, Sure, I'll get it for you right away. Meanwhile, at the Su family's residence, it was the day they were to deliver their goods. The western region merchants were extremely satisfied with the rainbow silk, and upon seeing this, Su Chan Chan smiled inwardly. Now it seems we've turned misfortune into a blessing. Not only can we capture the market within the Yu Kingdom, but we can also take over the western region's market. At this moment, Su Chan Chan ordered her servants to present the clothes made of rainbow silk as a gift to the western region merchants. After seeing the western region merchants go to change, Su Chan Chan finally took a breath of relief. With this, the Su family has weathered the storm, and my father-in-law has enough money to pursue the position of glamorous province subordinate commander. Thinking of this, Su Chan Chan mockingly thought of Shen Lang as foolish. He gave away the formula so easily. Unexpectedly, the next moment, a scream came from the changing room. When Su Chan Chan pushed the door and entered, she saw the skin of the western region merchants was covered in red spots, and some were even having difficulty breathing. Su Chan Chan thought she had earned two formulas from Shen Lang, but those formulas turned out to be a ticking time bomb. Shen Lang had early on added up to nine ingredients known to cause allergies in westerners to the formula, and Su Chan Chan, pressed for time, only tested the durability of the formula, without the leisure to identify which substances were superfluous for dying. Thus, Shen Lang's allergy package could be said to be a major weapon against Su Chan Chan's partners. The patriarch of the Su family, bloodshot eyes, exclaimed, Shen Lang, it must be your doing. I won't let you go even as a ghost. Understanding everything, Su Chan Chan's face darkened, as if she could imagine Shen Lang's smug expression. Ah, the Su family is completely ruined now. With just a little trick, I, Shen Lang, took you down. Should I lend you another bag of gold coins? At this moment, Su Chan Chan could no longer hold herself up and collapsed, her face covered in tears, throwing herself into Zhang Ji's arms, sobbing loudly. Unbeknownst to her, aside from ordering people to suppress the scene, Zhang Ji's gaze towards Su Chan Chan was already contemplating calling off the engagement, for the Su family was truly beyond salvation now. Inside the library of Sky's NC Pavilion, after Shen Lang perfectly solved the astronomical question of Sky's NC Pavilion, he easily obtained the treasured meteor from beyond the heavens. This made Shen Lang feel, it seems like the scholars of Sky's NC Pavilion don't care about meteor from beyond the heavens at all, and Shen Lang's handsome appearance also won the favor of the elder sister, who kept launching flirtatious advances at Shen Lang. Little brother, guess how old sister is? Shen Lang directly activated his divine eye to precisely identify her age, 23 and a half years old, but the elder sister would never admit it. Giggle, I'm only 18. This made the scholars of Sky's NC Pavilion somewhat unable to watch. You've been saying you're 18 for the past 18 years, and you're still 18 now. The two scholars didn't dare to speak out loud, but caught
soft while thinking, mf, usually commanding us around. Now that a slightly handsome young man comes along, you're all over him. Where's your dignity and pride? Facing the two scholars, Zhang Yuin immediately changed her demeanor. Hey, what's all the coughing about? Got tuberculosis? Cough somewhere else. Little brother, that old thing was coughing and polluting the air just now. I've made him leave. Can't let you catch any diseases. The elder sister also told Chen Lang, apart from the southern sea sword king, no one else has been able to decipher meteor from beyond the heavens. There was even a grandmaster, who spent a year and a half here, and still got nothing. Shen Lang knew this person, who was Big Fool's master, Zhong Chuk, but this was not a problem for Shen Lang. A scan with his titanium alloy dog eyes would suffice. Then recording everything in his brain, the complexity of it, also made Shen Lang understand why. Those who specialize in deciphering secret manuals usually don't practice martial arts, because they simply don't have the spare energy. An hour later, Shen Lang had finished deciphering everything, and he also made his farewells to the elder sister and others. On the way back to the Count's mansion with Jean Mulan, Jean Mulan noticed the scent of another woman on her husband. Shen Lang became somewhat flustered, starting his evasive explanation. No, no, my lady, you're mistaken, that's the smell from the jade bricks. Seeing Shen Lang still not admitting, Jean Mulan jumped onto another horse, leaving Shen Lang to ride alone. Shen Lang hurriedly explained, my lady, it's not my fault, that woman insisted on getting close to me and even wanted to sit on my lap. I sternly stopped her, otherwise, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Jean Mulan snorted lightly, clearly not believing Shen Lang's words. Seeing this, Shen Lang started his performance. Ah, my lady, I might fall off if I ride alone. Seemingly convinced by Shen Lang's sincerity, Jean Mulan could only reach out to hold Shen Lang, and Shen Lang took the opportunity to hold Jean Mulan in his arms. Then he started his sweet talk again. My lady, you are truly kind. In my heart, you will always be the only one. Other women are just like wildflowers by the roadside. I, Shen Lang, would never pick them. At most, I'd accidentally brush past and catch a bit of their fragrance. Jean Mulan was charmed into blushing and dared not look at Shen Lang. Such a guy, managing to make cheating sound so refined and elegant. Seeing Shen Lang still clinging to her, Jean Mulan was about to ask Shen Lang to leave. When Shen Lang looked up at her and asked, My lady, have you bathed today? Having been on the road all day, Jean Mulan, of course, hadn't bathed, prompting Shen Lang to display a look of disdain. Jean Mulan quickly sniffed herself. I haven't bathed for just one day. How could I smell? Later, at a lake, Shen Lang curiously asked Jean Mulan, My lady, why are we stopping here? Jean Mulan's face turned slightly red. To bathe, so you won't disdain me, ancestor. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Zhang Ji relentlessly relayed everything that had happened at the Su family, verbatim to his father, and shortly after, an envoy from the Hidden Origin Society, Xu Tinyu, came to visit. He told Zhang Chong, as long as your son marries my cousin, she will bring a dowry of 100,000 gold coins, with no strings attached. However, Zhang Chong chose to refuse. We have a marriage agreement with the Su family, and will not break it lightly, and he instructed his son to go back and comfort Su Chanqian. Tell her, our Zhang family will neither break nor call off the engagement. The envoy from the Hidden Origin Society also said, you must hurry back. According to common belief, the time for someone to consider suicide is within 48 hours of a breakdown. After this period, even in despair, they won't think of dying. Zhang Ji was silent for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Riding swiftly, Zhang Ji returned to the Su family by night. Upon seeing Zhang Ji, Su Chanqian immediately started apologizing. Zhang Ji comforted Su Chanqian. Take it easy. It's alright. Don't think too much. Just rest well. Su Chanqian was moved by his words. If the Zhang family wants to call off the engagement, I would understand. I will publicly declare that all faults lie with me. Zhang Ji shook his head. Don't be silly, darling. I wouldn't do that. Then he stroked Su Chanqian's head. Chanqian, don't worry about it. A good sleep will make it better. Obediently, Su Chanqian closed her eyes. Later, Zhang Ji went to visit Su Chanqian's father. The patriarch of the Su family was also very emotional upon seeing Zhang Ji. Having not slept for days, he implicitly refused to admit defeat in his words, even contemplating reneging on the deal with the Western region merchants, while also promising Zhang Ji. After taking down the mythical turtle count, he did not want any share of the profits from dividing the mythical turtle count's assets, planning to sell everything to pursue an official position for Zhang Ji's father. Zhang Ji didn't say much, but advised his father-in-law to calm down and take his medicine. When the patriarch of the Su family took the medicine handed over by Zhang Ji, he drank it in one gulp. Unexpectedly, the next moment, he started bleeding from all orifices and collapsed to the ground, stammering. The medicine, was there poison in it? Then, perplexed, he asked Zhang Ji, why, if you could divorce, why kill me? Father-in-law, I could be widowed but cannot break off the engagement. The Zhang family values integrity. This statement made everything clear to the patriarch of the Su family. With his last bit of strength, he glared at Zhang Ji, you are even more ruthless than Shen Lang. Before dying, the patriarch truly regretted, regretting having made ties with such a wolf as Zhang Chong. Then Zhang Ji took out a forged will, placed it in a safe, and returned to Su Chanqian's room. He glanced at Su Chanqian, his trembling hand, ultimately didn't touch Su Chanqian's 
pretty face. He silently said to her, Chan Chan, you're so smart, so beautiful. I truly liked you. Sleep, Chan Chan. After you fall asleep, all troubles will vanish. After Zhang Ji stepped outside, several figures in black doused the Su family's courtyard with oil. The next moment, a great fire blazed up instantly. And this fire, as Zhang Chong stated, was their way of not breaking the engagement. Soon, Su Chan Chan's cries for help could be heard from inside, but the door was locked, and Su Chan Chan couldn't escape. In disbelief, she yelled, Husband, save me. It wasn't you who set the fire, was it? Zhang Ji, why are you doing this? Zhang Ji, you're so cruel. Even more so than Shen Lang. I must have been blind. With an expressionless face, Zhang Ji muttered, Chan Chan, life is too full of suffering. Have a good sleep, and there will be no more pain. The great fire at the Su family's residence finally drew attention from the outside, and by the next day, news of the Su family's fire had spread throughout mythical Turtle City. Despite City Lord Liu personally leading hundreds of soldiers to fight the fire, and Zhang Ji making multiple attempts to rush into the flames, he was unable to save his fiancée. The patriarch of the Su family, Su Chan Chan, and the third son of the Su family, either committed suicide or were burned to death. The once great Su family was almost completely wiped out, leaving only the patriarch's blind old mother and a child under the age of five. The forged suicide note by Zhang Ji pointed the finger of blame at Chen Lang of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Zhang Ji also held a grand funeral for the Su family. The young child of the Su family was too young to endure, so Zhang Ji personally acted as a filial son, kneeling in front of the memorial hall. For every guest that arrived, he knelt down to pay his respects. Zhang Chong attended the Su family's funeral and even acknowledged the mother of the Su family's patriarch as his adoptive mother, drawing astonishment from all present. The unrest in Mythical Turtle City wasn't limited to the Su family. The territory of the Mythical Turtle Count's mansion also saw the arrival of uninvited guests, who committed acts of burning, killing, and looting against the villagers. They were immediately discovered by the Count's mansion's patrolling cavalry. Long before, this man with a scar, who had conflicts with Shen Lang, drew his sword and charged at the villains. Unexpectedly, his full force strike was easily blocked, and under the mocking smile of the opponent, his sword shattered instantly, and the man with the scar was sent flying. Jean Sword Lady's expression immediately became serious. I didn't expect the gap to be this big. Facing the pirates emanating a brutal aura, Jean Sword Lady showed no fear, drawing her sword to prepare for battle. This scene, however, caught the eye of the Pirate King's son, Chiu Xiao, who took a liking to Jean Sword Lady's defiance. A stubborn woman, I like it, you're mine now. Seeing this, Jean Sword Lady's face was filled with disgust as she charged at Chiu Xiao, who laughed heartily. Don't worry, I won't kill you. Just as the two were less than two meters apart, a huge sword collided with Chiu Xiao's curved blade first. It turned out that the newcomer was Jean Shuring, the top expert of Mythical Turtle Count, and also the deputy commander of the Count's mansion's private soldiers. After the collision, both parties stepped back, and Chiu Xiao saw the Mythical Turtle Count himself coming forward. He immediately addressed the Mythical Turtle Count as his father-in-law. Father-in-law has arrived. Chiu Xiao pays his respects to father-in-law. Where's my wife Milan? Why isn't she here to greet me? Father Jean frowned, without responding, but questioned Chiu Xiao. Why are you here now when the time has not yet come? Chiu Xiao then took out a contract, indicating he was here for money. A total of 100,000 gold coins, to be repaid over 30 years, with an annual repayment of 9,000 gold coins including principal and interest. This was agreed upon in the peace treaty between the previous mythical Turtle Count and Furious Tide City. You're not going to deny this treaty between the previous mythical Turtle Count's mansion and Furious Tide City, are you? It turns out that the previous mythical Turtle Count, wanting to emulate his ancestor Jean Zhou and fighting pirates to expand his territory, ended up being defeated, with his army and fleet entirely annihilated by the Pirate King. Subsequently, due to relentless retaliations by the Pirate King, the previous mythical Turtle Count, unable to withstand the pressure, signed the peace treaty with Furious Tide City, agreeing to compensate them with 100,000 gold coins, the compensation to the Pirate King, the massive debt to the Hidden Origin Society, and the maintenance of 3,000 private soldiers, put such a heavy burden without exploiting the people. If not for Father Jin's conservative and even rigid way of governance, it would have been impossible for the mythical Turtle Count's mansion to stabilize again over 20 years. However, under the new policy, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion once again found itself in a difficult situation. This year, Chiu Zhao's arrival was two months earlier than usual, just as Father Jean was suspecting whether the Pirate King might be collaborating with Zhang Chong. Chiu Xiao asked again, where's my wife Jean Mulan? A few years ago, she lost a martial contest to me. According to our maritime rules, she's already my wife. Look at my chest. Why isn't there a tattoo? This spot is reserved especially for Mulan. Although I've had hundreds, even thousands of women, not one has taken the place on my chest. Chiu Zhao's tattoos are all portraits of women, and his reason for arriving two months early was because he had already received news that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion was on the brink of collapse. He feared that in two more months, his wife would no longer be there, and he couldn't bear to lose Jean Mulan. 
a beauty without parallel. Father Jean didn't want to hear anymore, and ordered Jean Shireen to take action. Immediately, Jean Shireen charged at Xiao Xiao on horseback. In the moment of their clash, Jean Shireen's giant sword broke, and he was wounded across the chest, while Xiao Xiao remained unscathed, gaining the upper hand. However, his precious horse was killed by Jean Shireen, which made Xiao Xiao laugh out loud in excitement. As the two faced off again, exchanging taunts, it was revealed that Xiao Xiao already knew Jean Mulan had married Shen Lang. Aside from wanting to kill Shen Lang, he showed no other emotion. Now, seeing Jean Mulan was not present, he demanded Father Jean to pay up immediately. Father Jean, restraining his anger, remembered Shen Lang's words. Xiao Xiao could not die yet. He was a major asset against Zhang Chong, a treasure to help them escape the new policy. So he needed to be kept alive until the right moment to be eliminated. Therefore, Father Jean had 3,000 gold coins brought out to give to Xiao Xiao, stating that the remaining 6,000 gold coins would be given when the contract expired. Xiao Xiao did not refuse. Before leaving, he cast a glance at Jean Sword Lady, then returned with his men. Meanwhile, by another lakeside, Jean Mulan was using her lap as a pillow for Shen Lang, who began to explain the method to break the meteor from beyond the heavens. Jean Mulan sat up straight to listen attentively. Practitioners of the meteor from beyond the heavens sword technique must consume a special metallic powder daily, derived from meteoric iron from beyond the heavens. Thus, their bodies contain a large amount of this special metal, creating a unique magnetic field. When they release their inner strength and true energy, it carries a natural magnetism. Therefore, the meteor from beyond the heavens sword technique is like a tornado, the natural magnetism disrupting your sword movements. Within its range, you're instantly repelled by the tempest, and with Tang Yan's decade-plus study of swordsmanship, his skill is profound. Unless your inner strength greatly exceeds Tang Yan's, there's no solution. Seeing Jean Mulan becoming more anxious as she listened, Shen Lang signaled her to relax. Learning the method to break it won't take two hours. The secret of meteor from beyond the heavens is divided into light and dark. The front for the sword technique, the back for the method to break it. The solution is simple. A tornado is immensely powerful, but its eye is the safest place. The tornado storm of meteor from beyond the heavens also has an eye. Finding the eye breaks meteor from beyond the heavens. And crucially, during the battle with Tang Yan, you must use a wooden sword. Jean Mulan looked astonished as she studied, and she understood why. This generation's sword king wanted to kill his wife, because once the method of breaking it was exposed, the dominance of the southern sea sword island would crumble. Jean Mulan's pretty face blushed with admiration as she looked at Chen Lang, and then, unable to control herself, she kissed Chen Lang. After realizing what she had done, an embarrassed Jean Mulan quickly left. Three days passed in a flash, and the Su family held their funeral. After the burial of the head of the Su family and Su Chan Chan, Zhang Ji cried in sorrow until he fainted. Seeing this, the Su family's grandmother personally took out the marriage certificate, intending to return the dowry and cancel the marriage. But just then, a now awake Zhang Ji refused, snatched the marriage certificate, and crawled to Su Chan Chan's grave, proclaiming, I bow to heaven and earth, second bow to the high hall. The couple bows to each other. From now on, Chan Chan is no longer my fiancé, but my officially wedded wife, for life, and for all eternity. With such a performance, everyone inside Mythical Turtle City praised Zhang Ji, as if Zhang Ji had truly become a man of deep love and loyalty in everyone's eyes. At night, at the Su family's tomb, two tomb robbers were digging up the grave of the head of the Su family, but upon opening the coffin, they were met with dismay, for not a single burial item was found, leaving them extremely disappointed. Then, cursing and swearing, they left. At this moment, another figure approached the tomb of the head of the Su family, put the body of the head of the Su family back into the coffin, and covered it, crying as she shoveled the soil. This person was Su Chan Chan, whom everyone thought was already dead. She swore a poisonous oath to avenge the Su family by any means necessary. In Su Chan Chan's bedroom, there was a secret underground chamber, used to hide important documents. The original document of the Dai formula given by Shen Lang was also among them. After the incident with the Western Region merchants, Su Chan Chan immediately suspected Shen Lang of playing tricks with the original document, so she went to carefully check the formula for the Dai. Unexpectedly, she saw written on the back of the formula, Zhang Ji will kill you. Although she did not understand why she had not seen these words before, Su Chan Chan thought it was a divisive tactic by Shen Lang. Still, she stored food food and water in the secret chamber, not anticipating that Zhang Ji would act so swiftly. The gentle words spoken beside the bed and the fierce fire tormented Su Chan Chan's heart, leaving her no chance to save her father. Su Chan Chan soaked her clothes with the water she had originally intended to drink, then used them to block the thick smoke seeping through the cracks. The fire burned for two full hours, and the air in the secret chamber gradually thinned. Fear and despair overwhelmed Su Chan Chan, and countless times she thought she would die then and there. Perhaps it was hatred that kept her going, not against Chen Lang. 
Wang, but against Zhang Chong, Zhang Ji, and herself, the Su family had become a burden, and the Zhang family, unconcerned about the reputation of being cruel officials, cared about the prestige of their moral conduct. Thus, they deliberately left a half-blind old man and a naive child alive to stage a drama of deep love and loyalty. Su Chanchian, who escaped, witnessed this entire scene, and was instantly engulfed by hatred. After the Zhang family dealt with the Su family, Prefect Zhang Chong and the envoy Yan Wu Jing from the province of the Southern Journey arrived at the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. They came to mediate the relationship between the mythical Turtle Count and the Jin High Count. Father Jin did not want to say much about Zhang Chong's insincere kindness. Zhang Chong did not hide this either and took his leave. After all, his visit was just for show. The horn signaling the strangulation of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion had officially sounded, starting from the dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain. Tonight, the city of Mythical Turtle began its curfew early. A team of people headed towards the Mythical Turtle Count's mansion, sent by the Sovereign. The entire Mythical Turtle Count's family knelt outside to welcome them. After a moment, a luxurious carriage stopped, and a person stepped out. This person had significant status, being the Sovereign's fourth prince, followed by the Governor Zhu Rong of the province of the Southern Journey. Father Jean was completely surprised to solve our Mythical Turtle Count's mansion. They actually sent a prince. The fourth prince glanced over the people of the Mythical Turtle Count, especially lingering on Jean Mulan for a while, then allowed them to rise, and proceeded to the main hall of the Count's mansion, loudly proclaiming, His Majesty decrees, Mythical Turtle Count, kneel to receive. The main point was to announce that the dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain would be presided over entirely by the Fourth Prince. After scanning the crowd, the Fourth Prince did not see Shen Lang present and asked, Where is Shen Lang? Isn't he the Mythical Turtle Count's strategist? The eunuch, understanding his master's intent, then asked Father Jean, Mythical Turtle Count, why is your son-in-law Shen Lang not here? Father Jean explained, Shen Lang is not feeling well, fearing he might pass his illness to the fourth prince. He did not come out. Hearing this, the fourth prince hummed meaningfully. I and Governor Xu are here only to listen, not to speak. You may say anything. The next moment, a few ancient books were presented by the Jin High Count as evidence that the Isle of Gold Mountain belonged to their Tang family. Then, looking towards the fourth prince, he requested him to administer justice. The fourth prince nodded in acknowledgement. The Tang family still understands their duty as subjects. Then, turning to the mythical Turtle Count, these ancient books indeed record that the Jin High Count owns the Isle of Gold Mountain, and it is reasonable and legal. Mythical Turtle Count, do you have anything to say? Father Jean directly responded, We object. This immediately caused the fourth prince's displeasure, not providing any documents and just saying so. Do you not understand the rules? However, Jean Mulan also made a clear stance. A butcher slaughters a pig, yet expects the pig to perform well before dying. Please forgive us, we cannot do that. According to the laws of the Yu Kingdom, as a vassal, our family has the right to independent defense. Even if the feudal lord comes, he has no right to take over the count's mansion's defense. But it seems that the laws of our ancestors do not apply anymore, after hundreds of years. The fourth prince's eyes narrowed, he did not expect the confrontation to escalate so quickly. At this moment, Father Jean asked the Jean High Count, Brother Tang, may we discuss this in the study? Hearing that the fourth prince did not decline, Jean High Count accepted the invitation. Unexpectedly, inside the study, they encountered Shen Lang. Shen Lang began by saying, the Isle of Gold Mountain has been protected by our Jean family's ancestors. Back then, it was the Jean High Marquis himself who knelt and begged our ancestor Jean Zhou to send troops, promising to gift the Isle of Gold Mountain to the Jean family after the success of their endeavors. We won't even discuss the life-saving grace our family has provided to yours for the moment. Why are you now reneging on what was promised? These words turned Jean High Count's face extremely dark. Tang Yan's brother, Tang Yun, shamelessly retorted, Is there any contract or evidence for giving the Isle of Gold Mountain to the Jean family a hundred years ago? Originally, there were three copies of this contract, one in Jean High Count's mansion, one with the Sovereign, and another in the Myth Mythical Turtle Count's Mansion. Unfortunately, the copy in the Mythical Turtle Count's Mansion went missing after the sudden death of the ancestor Jean Zhou. Shen Lang responded, Fine, we can leave these old matters aside. If the Mythical Turtle Count's Mansion falls, under the new regime, wouldn't the fire eventually reach you too? Therefore, our two families should unite and assist each other. However, Tang Yun merely responded with, Better him than me. Shen Lang was surprised that this saying also existed in this world. He asked, looking very distressed, Jean High Count, must we really fight each other to the death? Jean High High Count stated outright, I, Tang Yun, have always been loyal to my country and emperor. I am ashamed to be associated with you. Tang Yun laughed. Shen Lang, we understand your desire to survive. Your Jin family is already finished. Reluctantly, Shen Lang began to negotiate. Let's talk. Of the iron produced by the Isle of Gold Mountain every year, 60% will go to you, and we'll keep 40%. Tang Yun merely chuckled lightly, then left the study with his father. Before they left, Shen Lang put on a very pleading demeanor to retain them. After they had completely left, 
Shen Lang spat disdainfully. In fact, Shen Lang had been acting all along. That demeanor indeed misled Jean High Count and his party into thinking that Shen Lang's reputation for being clever and resourceful was exaggerated, that he was merely a jumping clown. Their caution towards Shen Lang dissipated. A moment later, Shen Lang joined Father Jean in the main hall. The fourth prince glanced at Shen Lang, then at Jean High Count, and realized that the mediation had failed. So, shall we proceed as per the usual tradition? Neither party had objections. Following this, the fourth prince read out the imperial decree. This time, to resolve the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute once and for all, the competition will permanently determine the ownership of the Isle of Gold Mountain. The dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain will consist of three battles. The first battle is a literary contest, with questions set by the sovereign. The second is a martial contest, a duel between two individuals. The final battle is a military contest, with each side deploying a hundred men to battle until annihilation or surrender. However, the literary and martial contests must be personally undertaken by the direct descendant of the two families, with no replacements allowed. To outsiders, the Jean family is bound to lose in both the literary and martial contests. Jean Mutsong and Jean Mulan are unlikely to match Tang Yun and Tang Yin. Thus, the dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain seems a certain loss for the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Following this, the mythical Turtle Count and Jean High Count each stamp the contract, confirming the agreement is irrevocable. Meanwhile, in a village within the domain of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, Su Chanchian, who had suffered the destruction of her family, was now determined to seek revenge for her Su family. For this purpose, she would even seek help from Shen Lang, whom she had looked down upon. However, as Su Chanchian was heading to a village in the Count's domain, she sensed something was amiss. Suddenly, she heard some noise ahead and stealthily moved closer to investigate. The scene before her eyes shocked her. Pirates from Furious Tide City were throwing dead bodies into the well from which the villagers drank, with the goal of creating a plague. This would result in the death of thousands in the domain of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Su Chanchian cursed these pirates as beasts, but knowing she was just a weak woman, she could not stop these pirates. She intended to leave and inform Shen Lang, but accidentally stepped on a branch. Just when Su Chanchian realized her mistake, the pirates had already surrounded her. Seeing that Su Chanchian was a beauty, they instantly became excited, showing greedy, lecherous smiles as they approached her. Su Chanchian urgently questioned them, encountering a peerless beauty like me. Why not present me to your young master? Aren't you afraid of dying in an ugly manner? The fat pirate leader grabbed Su Chanchian by the neck and told her, we can just not tell the young master and kill you afterwards. Su Chanchian argued logically. Among you fifteen pirates, there are three women. Are they going to sleep with me? Are they also willing to take this risk with you? Even if they don't act, do you dare guarantee others won't report you? The leader, a hefty pirate, was intimidated by her words. Previously, someone had failed to present a beauty to their young master and was flayed alive upon discovery. Reluctantly, they decided to bring Su Chanchian to their young master, foregoing their immediate desires. Su Chanchian's mind raced, thinking, I haven't avenged my family yet. I cannot give up like this. Imagining how Shen Lang would handle such a situation, she quickly devised a plan. She pretended to sprain her ankle, then collapsed to the ground, scattering a few gold coins she had on her. The sight of gold made the pirate's eyes gleam, and the hefty leader quickly grabbed Su Chanchian, demanding to know where she got so many gold coins. Su Chanchian tearfully indicated, I am just a girl from a common wealthy family. The leader didn't buy it, questioning, how could a girl from a common family have so many gold coins? And wandering around during curfew, then, Placing a knife near Su Chanchian's ear, he threatened, Tell the truth, or I'll cut off your ear. Su Chanchian, feigning terror, revealed her identity as the miss of the Su family. The leader, thinking she was lying, kicked her away, believing Su Chanchian had perished in the fire at her family's home. At this moment, a female pirate vouched for Su Chanchian, having seen her frequently during past transactions. The leader became even more excited, suspecting Su Chanchian held a significant secret. Su Chanchian, where were you headed in the middle of the night? Su Chanchian, looking pitiful, said, I wanted to retrieve some money from a secret treasury hidden by the Su family, and then flee far away. Upon hearing the treasury contained approximately 30,000 gold coins, the leader's eyes widened. With that much gold, why would I continue being a pirate? He immediately told his comrades, with this money, we can retire and become landlords. Blinded by the promise of gold, the leader lost all interest in Su Chanchian as a woman. Su Chanchian, lead us to the secret treasury, or I will kill you. Shortly thereafter, they arrived at the dilapidated warehouse next to the burned-down Su family home. Su Chanchian opened a secret passage, leading the pirates inside. Soon, they saw a few treasure chests, but upon opening them, found only a pitiful amount of gold coins. Furious, the hefty pirate grabbed Su Chanchian, demanding, where are the 30,000 gold coins? Su Chanchian pointed to a large porcelain jar, indicating that the gold coins were inside. The pirates hastily used a knife to try to smash the jar, only to find it incredibly hard. As they discussed how to break it open, Su Chanchian took the opportunity to run away. The hefty pirate, picking up a large wooden stick, 
struck the porcelain jar. The next moment, agonizing screams echoed through the cellar. This place was not a secret gold treasury, but where the Sioux family stored sulfuric acid. Due to the production process, the sulfuric acid, having been stored for a long time, was under high pressure inside the jar. The moment the pirates broke the jar, the container exploded. After escaping the cellar, Su Chan Chan quickly blocked the exit, unmoved by their curses and screams. Once everything had quieted down, Su Chan Chan was shaken, thinking, I've killed people. Then, with a twisted smile, she said, I killed five pirates on my own. I escaped the trap by myself. After an unknown period, when Su Chan Chan emerged outside, dawn had already broken. At that moment, her gaze was incredibly determined as she looked towards the direction of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Meanwhile, Shen Lang had made ample preparations for the dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain. Starting with the literary contest, Jean Mutsong was to compete with Tang Yun in drafting a policy essay and a poem. Shen Lang searched the wisdom database for ancient masterpieces, preparing 19 potential topics for Jean Mutsong and organizing 130 immortal poems for him to draw inspiration from, which was a tough challenge for Jean Mutsong. However, considering the survival of the Count's mansion, Jean Mutsong had no complaints. Jean Mulan's contest was not a major concern. The final aspect was the military contest. Analyzing the Count's mansion's 40 consecutive losses, Shen Lang identified the defeat's root cause in the significant gap in equipment. With Shen Lang's intervention, things were about to change. Utilizing metallurgy data, Shen Lang developed improved forging techniques. The war blade in Jean Huey's hands was a product of Shen Lang's technological enhancements. Father Jean, astonished by the quality, noticed a significant difference in a test where Shen Lang's forged war blade was compared against one used by Jean High Count. The blade from Jean High Count nearly broke, while an armor plate struck by Father Jean split in two. In contrast, armor forged with Shen Lang's improvements only sustained a minor scratch, leaving Father Jean ecstatic. Shen Lang had not spared any effort in his plans, intending first to use all resources to win the dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain. His second step involved using Cliff Watch Island and the Hidden Origin Society to counterbalance each other. The third step was the Slaughter Pig strategy, turning Cliff Watch Island into bait and a trap to eliminate enemies coveting the Jean family. The final step was the Stormy Wave strategy, aiming to defeat Zhang Chong and permanently neutralize the threat of the new regime. As Shen Lang was contemplating how Jean Mulan would reward him, he was informed by the butler that Su Chan Chan requested to see him. Shen Lang smirked, so, this woman didn't die after all. Su Chan Chan, too, stood before her enemy, Shen Lang. Her once pampered body bore countless scars, but she seemed unfazed. Upon meeting Shen Lang, she immediately informed him, the wells in the villages within the territory have been poisoned by pirates, intending to create a plague. Hearing this, Shen Lang ordered Jin Hui to lead experts to eliminate the pirates, identify which wells were poisoned, and seal them with lime before the Count's mansion allocates funds for new wells. Jin Mulan also joined the mission, leaving Su Chan Chan and Shen Lang alone. Su Chan Chan, somewhat uneasy, my warning saved many people in the Count's mansion's territory. Shen Lang, you owe me a favor now. At that moment, Shen Lang suddenly addressed Su Chan Chan. Su Chan Chan, you've just killed someone, haven't you? Su Chan Chan looked shocked, unable to comprehend how Shen Lang could tell, but Su Chan Chan didn't care. Instead, she gritted her teeth and said, I want to take revenge, to destroy Zhang Chong and Zhang Ji, to make them die without a place to be buried. Can you do it? Yes, but are you willing to pay any price? Any price? Seeing Su Chan Chan nod, Shen Lang pinched Su Chan Chan's chin and asked her again, really any price? I said, any price. Su Chan Chan replied firmly, slowly lifting her skirt. However, Shen Lang turned his head and said, no, you're not sincere. Then what do you want? You haven't bathed for days, and you still claim to be sincere? If you were truly earnest, you would have made yourself clean and fragrant long ago. An exasperated Su Chan Chan wanted to curse at Shen Lang, but after teasing her, Shen Lang seriously told her, enough, I don't need you to do anything for me, I just need you to go to a place, to do one thing, to seduce someone, and that someone is the daughter of the Pirate King of Furious Tide City, the young lady of Furious Tide City, Chiu Yaor. Hearing this, Su Chan Chan's pretty face turned pale, isn't she the notorious killer who has slain men all over the world? But she's especially nice to women, especially beautiful and fragile ones. Although she didn't understand what Shen Lang was up to, she liked men, so she refused Shen Lang. Shen Lang was speechless, didn't you say you'd do anything for revenge? Su Chan Chan shook her head. Even in seeking revenge, I need to stay alive. Furious Tide City will surely join the siege on the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Chiu Tianwei is in collusion with Zhang Chong. If I go to Furious Tide City, wouldn't I be walking into a trap? Zhang Chong and his allies have already spun a vast web over the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, and behind them, the real power intent on destroying the Jean family is the Sovereign. No matter how clever you are, it's like throwing eggs against a rock. You have unparalleled wisdom and should not be confined to this small place. You should be assisting someone with greater power. For example, the Third Prince. Because Zhang Chong is the Crown Prince's man, if we want to eliminate them, we can only seek refuge
refuge with the third prince. The third prince is now the sovereign's favorite son. If you are willing, I will go and offer myself to become his concubine. Then, you could become the third prince's advisor, and I would act as his financier. Together, we could become confidants of the third prince, ensuring a future of glory, wealth, and power. However, if you cannot bear it, I can be your concubine. However, Shen Lang found Su Chan Chan too smelly. Chan Chan, your scent is too strong. I can hardly stand it. Angry Su Chan Chan distanced herself from Shen Lang. How about it? Come with me now, and let's seek refuge with the third prince together. But Shen Lang refused without hesitation. Su Chan Chan was puzzled. The mythical turtle city was about to fall, and Shen Lang's actions would surely lead to his dismemberment by those people. Shen Lang just smiled. I've only said one thing. I want to protect my family. Su Chan Chan was incredulous. Ridiculous. A person like you, having feelings? Shen Lang responded, nonsense, not to mention others, just you and me. A couple for a night owes a hundred days of grace. I still have feelings for you. But this statement made Su Chan Chan's gaze murderous. If you really had feelings, would you let my family be destroyed? Seeing Shen Lang so resolute, knowing she couldn't sway him, she planned to leave. Next year at this time, I will offer sacrifices for you. After all, a couple for a night owes a hundred days of grace. Shen Lang called out to her. Su Chan Chan was puzzled. What? Do you want to detain me? Shen Lang looked reluctant to part. You, a frail woman, going to the third prince is like a lamb entering a tiger's den. I can't bear it. Su Chan Chan cursed at Shen Lang. Pa, do you care about my life or death? Stop pretending to be reluctant. Shen Lang suddenly became serious and countered Su Chan Chan. Do you think in the struggle for the Isle of Gold Mountain, we are bound to lose? To this end, Shen Lang and Su Chan Chan made a bet. If they win the conflict on the Isle of Gold Mountain, she would follow his plan to go to Furious Tide City and seduce Chiu Yao'er. If he loses, they would together seek refuge with the third prince. Su Chan Chan hesitated. Although there's no guarantee of Shen Lang's character, his abilities are undeniable. Maybe he really has a way to turn the tables. Su Chan Chan chose to trust Shen Lang once more. Shortly after, Jean Mulan came to Shen Lang's study after taking a bath, informing him, all the pirates have been killed, all the poison has been burned, all the contaminated wells have been treated with lime and then sealed. Unexpectedly, Jean Mulan suddenly asked about Shen Lang's delicate ex-wife. Where did your delicate ex-wife go? Her tone almost spilling with jealousy. Shen Lang replied with a smile. Su Chan Chan left. Jean Mulan countered. Left? What did you do to Su Chan Chan? Pretending to be outraged, Shen Lang responded. Jean Mulan, can't you trust me a bit? Am I that kind of person? Jean Mulan's cheeks blushed slightly as she kissed Shen Lang, rewarding him for his fidelity. Yet, yeah, Shen Lang expressed regret. All my chastity, and I only get a kiss. Jean Mulan said, my lord, I want to kill Chiu Xiao. This person is inhumane and deserves to die. Shen Lang hugged Jean Mulan's waist. Soon, very soon. Now Chiu Xiao is still valuable and can't be killed, but his days are numbered. We won't let him die easily. But at dusk, Zhang Chong sent an invitation, asking Shen Lang to attend a banquet hosted by the fourth prince alone. Shen Lang, taking the invitation, remarked, only me, not inviting Mulan? Interesting. Meanwhile, at the Zhang family mansion, Zhang Chong signaled to his son, tonight, the cousin of Xu Tingyu from the Hidden Origin Society, Miss Chi of the Chi family, will come. You should get close to her. The Chi family is known as the wealthy spice magnates. Besides agreeing, what puzzled Zhang Ji was the reason for inviting Shen Lang. Zhang Chong explained it was to test Shen Lang. This made Zhang Ji even more puzzled. Isn't the mythical turtle count already doomed to lose in the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict? Zhang Chong slightly shook his head, teaching Zhang Ji a lesson. There's no such thing as a sure win in this world. We should despise the enemy strategically, but take them seriously tactically. Then he asked Zhang Ji to call his sister, Zhang Chunhua, over. When Zhang Chunhua arrived at the study, Zhang Ji immediately asked her, Can you take down Shen Lang tonight? Zhang Chunhua, hands on her hips and full of confidence on her charming face, replied, Father, what do you think? Zhang Chong, somewhat speechless, simply stated, Go, take down Shen Lang. Meanwhile, at the mythical Turtle City Lord's Mansion, the venue for the banquet, Zhu Wending and his son, who had previously been tricked by Shen Lang, were preparing to attend the fourth prince's evening banquet. They planned to use the relationship with Zhu Rong, the governor's distant relative, to propose marriage to Zhang Chong, making it difficult for him to refuse. He warned his son Zhu Wenhua, Before this, you must not reveal our intentions because Zhang Chong is unaware of this. We will settle it with a single blow when the time comes. The cunning Zhu Wending had already thought about the benefits to be divided after the downfall of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Since Zhang Chong is the host, as long as we are married into the Zhang family, we can also partake and bite off a big piece of the profits from the corpse. At the same time, on his way to the banquet, Shen Lang spent 200 gold coins on a new outfit and reminded himself not to give anything away tonight, not letting Zhang Chong, that cunning old fox, sniff out the truth. Suddenly, Shen Lang heard a guard say, Be careful, young master. When he regained his senses, he saw Zhang Chunhua already inside the carriage. Shen Lang, save me, save me. Tonight, someone wants to ruin my lifelong happiness. Elope with me, let's turn the raw rice into cooked rice. In reality, Zhang Chunhua was 
testing Shen Lang's reaction. If Shen Lang showed excitement and was more frivolous than her, it would mean he was very confident about the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict. If Shen Lang sat upright and seriously refused her, it would indicate that Shen Lang was disguising his true feelings, and they should be wary. Shen Lang's reaction was to first freeze, then appear attracted by Zhang Chunhua's beauty. This convinced Zhang Chunhua that Shen Lang had no plan for the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict. After all, the initial pause showed Shen Lang was preoccupied, and his dazed eyes indicated his despair. Now heating up again only shows he's attracted by my beauty. At this moment, Shen Lang signaled Jin Hui to keep driving. He was fine. Then he asked Zhang Chunhua, Miss Zhang, what were you saying just now? Shen Lang, save me, save me. Someone is about to ruin my lifelong happiness. Shen Lang said that's not right. Next line, turn the raw rice into cooked rice. Shen Lang smiled and nodded, signaling Zhang Chunhua. All right, let's start then. The conversation heard inside scared Jin Hui to death. Was this something he was supposed to hear? When he heard Shen Lang asking if he heard anything, he quickly said no. Inside the carriage, Zhang Chunhua stopped Shen Lang's advances, blushing and indicating, this is on the main road, though. However, Shen Lang didn't listen and was about to kiss Zhang Chunhua. Zhang Chunhua was truly panicked, not expecting Shen Lang to actually go through with it. But suddenly, Shen Lang stopped his movements, causing Zhang Chunhua to be suspicious. Young Master Shen, what's wrong? Shen Lang said, Miss Zhang, haven't you always had a crush on me? Last time, you even wrote me a love poem and invited me to meet at the covered bridge. I was stopped by my wife as I was leaving and she beat me up. Zhang Chunhua looked surprised. Is Jean Mulan that fierce? Yes, she's quick to hit and scold me. Just now, she almost broke my arm, all because I accidentally misspoke. Zhang Chunhua began to comfort Shen Lang again and, with a flushed face, asked him, Shen Lang, then do you like me? Shen Lang nodded, I do. Seeing this, Zhang Chunhua pressed further. Then, do you want to be with me forever? Shen Lang nodded twice. Zhang Chunhua then placed Shen Lang's hand on her face. How about you leave the mythical Turtle Count's mansion and become a son-in-law in my family? Not a live-in son-in-law, but a son-in-law, and my father will find you an excellent future that will not disappoint your talent. However, Shen Lang refused, holding Zhang Chunhua tight and saying, I can't leave the mythical Turtle Count's mansion at the most dangerous time. Wouldn't that make me heartless and a scoundrel? I can't betray my wife. Hearing this, Zhang Chunhua, with a darkened face, asked Shen Lang, then what are you doing right now? Shen Lang, with a look of deep affection, replied, I love Jean Mulan, but I also love you. How about this? If there's a major upheaval in the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, I'll come to marry you then. Zhang Chunhua was utterly speechless. Wow, so I'm just a backup plan. At this point, Shen Lang asked Zhang Chunhua, Chunhua, have you ever heard the saying, it's not about lasting forever, but about having once possessed. Everything is past and gone, so we should enjoy the moment. If love is enduring, then it doesn't matter whether it's every day or occasionally. A single moment of me is worth more than countless others. Zhang Chunhua was initially admiring Shen Lang's eloquent and beautiful poetry, but then Shen Lang wanted to turn the raw rice into cooked rice again. Zhang Chunhua felt helpless, such a talented scoundrel, I've never seen one like you before. Shen Lang, do you only want my body? If you had to choose between me and Jean Mulan, who would it be? Shen Lang shook his head, clearly choosing Jean Mulan. Zhang Chunhua, puzzled, asked, why? Doesn't Jean Mulan mistreat you every day? My wife may mistreat me a thousand times, but I treat her as if it's first love. So, Zhang Chunhua, I do like you, but I'm sorry, she came first. But who says love can only be singular? Have you ever seen a teapot that only has one teacup? This statement led Zhang Chunhua to slap Shen Lang, cursing him as a shameless scoundrel. I must have been blind to have fallen for you. Then she ran out of the carriage without looking back. Jin Hui, pale-faced and trembling, said, Young master, I swear I didn't see anything, and I won't talk nonsense when I get home. Shen Lang shook his head. How can you say you didn't see anything? It was clearly Zhang Chunhua who came to seduce me, and then I firmly rejected her. I even got slapped. Hearing this, Jin Hui nodded frantically, understanding Shen Lang's implication. Satisfied with this, Shen Lang began to admire his own handsomeness again. Meanwhile, in another part of the banquet hall, Zhang Chong saw his daughter return and asked how it went. Upon hearing this, Zhang Chunhua exploded in anger. Scum, jerk, pervert, a ghost deserving of a thousand cuts. To see him is to know he's the lowest of the low. Seeing his daughter like this, Zhang Chong realized she had suffered a loss, but still inquired if she had managed to test Shen Lang. If you don't like Shen Lang, I won't force you. However, Zhang Chunhua shook her head. It's not that I dislike him. Though he's a scoundrel, he's an enchanting one. Then she turned and left to take a bath. Not long after, at the entrance to the Lord's Mansion banquet, when Zhang Chunhua saw Shen Lang, she behaved like a proper lady. But as they brushed past each other, Shen Lang found a note in his hand. The note was a plea for help from Zhang Chunhua, asking Shen Lang to stop Zhu Wenhua's marriage proposal. As the fourth prince's banquet began, Zhang Qi introduced the dignitaries present to Shen Lang, including the heir of the peaceful stability count's mansion. Shen Lang nodded in greeting. Suddenly, there was a commotion outside. The guest of honor, the fourth prince, had arrived, followed by Zhang Chong and his entourage. Shen Lang glanced around and noticed the absence of Jin Hai Count and others, likely avoiding the event to prevent the impression of
of royal favoritism. However, he noticed Chiyu, the daughter of the spice magnate, standing beside Zhang Chanhua. Despite not being from a scholarly family, she exhibited more of a scholarly aura than the others, with a strong sense of cunning. Moments later, the banquet officially started. While the host was introducing local delicacies to the fourth prince, Zhu Wenhua couldn't wait to confront Shen Lang. Shen Lang, I heard that your mythical turtle count's mansion owes a lot to the Hidden Origin Society, a debt you can't repay in this lifetime. If the mythical turtle count's mansion falls, what will become of you, brother Shen? Shen Lang nonchalantly responded, it's yet to be seen who will have the last laugh. Brother Zhu, you speak too soon. Unbeknownst to Zhu Wenhua, his father was somewhat disappointed in him. Now is not the time to trouble Shen Lang, who was seen as doomed, but to propose marriage to Zhang Chong to get a piece of the mythical turtle count's mansion. The next moment, Zhu Lanting stood up, toasting Zhu Rong the governor, hinting at something. Although Zhu Lanting and Zhu Rong shared the same surname, they were distant relatives. Zhu Rong's willingness to facilitate the match was not because of their distant kinship, but due to Zhang Chunhua's enchanting and potentially troublesome beauty. He feared losing control over Zhang Chong if Zhang Chunhua married into the royal family. During the conversation, he looked towards Zhu Wenhua. Zhu Wenhua, I've heard of your talent. Why not seize this opportunity to recite a poem for everyone's enjoyment? Zhu Wenhua indicated he was ready, and his gaze shifted towards Zhang Chunhua, showing that his poem was dedicated to her. On the surface, Zhang Chunhua appeared expectant, but inside, she was cursing. If this continues, I really will have to marry Zhu Wenhua. Then Zhu Wenhua unfolded his fan and recited the poem he had written with great emotion. The Miss Chi of the Chi family was the first to applaud, praising the poem. Then, looking enviously at Zhang Chanhua, she said, The poem is truly beautiful. Sister Chanhua, he is praising your virtues. Zhang Chanhua could only respond awkwardly. However, after seeing her father also praise Zhu Wenhua, she desperately looked towards Shen Lang. Shen Lang, you scoundrel, won't you come and save me? You've taken so much advantage of me. Isn't it only right that you help me now? Among those present, no one could openly stop Zhu Rong's matchmaking. Some didn't want to offend Zhu Rong, while others cared about their reputation and didn't want to be branded as villains, like the fourth prince. Only Shen Lang, being everyone's enemy here, didn't care about Zhu Rong's opinion. Shen Lang then spoke up, questioning, Zhu Wenhua, is there any point in praising the daughter of the Zhang prefect like this, comparing her to the purest jade and vying with the orchids for fragrance? Don't you find that too exaggerated? Zhu Wenhua looked coldly at Shen Lang. What do you mean by that? Shen Lang. Shen Lang smiled and retorted, I just dislike your exaggerated poetry and flattery. We're all men here. Such groveling to women, elevating them beyond reason, is like inflating the price of meat. When all men can no longer afford a wife, not a single sycophant is innocent. Zhang Chunhua's eyes filled with blood upon hearing this. Shen Lang, is this how you save me? By pushing me into a pit and then offering a hand to pull me out? The fourth prince also scolded Shen Lang, inflating the price of meat. Shen Lang, do you realize that with those words, all women will see you as an enemy? Is this the extent of your talent to produce such vile and lowly words? Just for that comment alone, you deserve a slap. Zhu Wenhua, seeing the fourth prince scolding Shen Lang, wore a look of smug mockery towards Shen Lang. As for Zhu Wenhua, Shen Lang really didn't want to say anything more, idiot. Do you really think the fourth prince is helping you? He's just not wanting Zhu Rong to propose marriage for you. That's why he's deliberately adding fuel to the fire, highlighting these four words as extremely vulgar. Because such vulgar words are loved by the common folk, they'll become widely spread as slang, potentially turning into an idiom or proverb. By then, Zhu Wenhua, you'll become synonymous with a sycophant, and Zhang Chanhua will become associated with meat. Therefore, Zhang Chanhua looked at Shen Lang with anger, being a talented woman herself. How could she not understand Shen Lang's intentions? As for the naive Zhu Wenhua, still challenging Shen Lang, if you think my poem is not good, then please write one for Miss Zhang Chanhua. I'd like to see how outstanding and dignified it is. Shen Lang certainly satisfied him. However, this poem is not for Zhang Chanhua, but for Miss Chiyu. The involved Chiyu was completely bewildered. I don't know young Master Shen. Shameless Shen Lang didn't care. Miss Chi may not know me, but I have been spiritually acquainted with you for a long time, effectively silencing Chiyu. This time Zhang Chanhua spoke up. I actually want to hear young Master Shen's poem. Sister Chi is both beautiful and wise, a heavenly being, and no praise is too much for her. Shen Lang then stepped forward, announcing his poem was titled to Chiyu. Shen Lang recited his poem, The Su Family Seeks Noble Connections, Visiting the Powerful. Zhang, a gentleman with talent, yet lacks sincerity. Pity the flames that startle in the dead of night. No sight of Chen Chen, only ghostly spirits emerge. The poem had just been recited. Zhang Ji immediately stood up, all because the poem spoke of the Su Family seeking wealth and status, and wanting to ally with the powerful and influential Zhang family. But Zhang Ji, despite his talents, lacked virtue. Far from bringing wealth and glory to his family, this move invited disaster that led to their downfall. Zhang Ji wanted to erupt in anger, but found it inappropriate to do so. He could only forcibly sit down, suppressing his feelings. Shen Lang's poem was a direct confrontation, clearly stating, if Qi Yu intends to marry Zhang Ji, consider first the tragic fate of the former Su Chanqian. Governor Zhu Rong marveled at Shen Lang's prowess, 
genius, a genius, using poetry as his weapon. At this moment, Zhu Wenhua was internally anxious, worried that Chen Lang had complicated matters. It was then his father stepped forward. He reported to the fourth prince about an issue. It was regarding a book Chen Lang had written, Boundless Romantic Affairs. In it, a character, a concubine named Li Pinger, shared a name with one of fourth prince's concubines. Thus, he felt Chen Lang's book was an insult to the fourth prince, asking the fourth prince to punish him. What Zhu Lanting didn't know was, the fourth prince had read Boundless Romantic Affairs and understood what was said. But in New Kingdom, it was rare to be punished for one's words or writings, because once a minister seized upon some text as a pretext for attack, it could set a precedent, leading to a plethora of literary cases, causing all scholars to live in fear. The fourth prince could not bear such a responsibility in his zeal to punish Shen Lang. Zhu Lanting had also apprehended Deng Xian, responsible for printing and selling Shen Lang's works. Watching Deng Xian plead for Shen Lang's help, the fourth prince internally calculated. If Shen Lang were to be killed now, and the mythical turtle count seized the opportunity to declare the contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain null and void, that would be troublesome. But Deng Xian's death would be inconsequential. Not only would it not affect anything, it would also preserve the royal family's dignity. Therefore, the fourth prince decided not to punish Shen Lang. Instead, he planned to punish Deng Xian with 20 heavy beatings. However, at this moment, Zhang Chong stood up, indicating he had an idea. That was to have Shen Lang compose another poem. But this poem must defend Deng Xian. If the poem was well crafted, Deng Xian would be acquitted. Hearing Zhang Chong's condition, the fourth prince was initially confused, until Zhang Chong said, Of course, this poem must not only defend Deng Xian, but also express your sentiments regarding the situation of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, especially since the contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain is imminent. A decisive moment that will determine the fate of the Jin family is approaching. You must be moved. Not only did the fourth prince understand, Xin Lang also felt a chill in his heart. He cursed Zhang Chong as an old fox. Poetry comes from the heart. It can reflect a person's emotions. In such haste, it's even harder to refine. It must come straight from the soul. But seeing Deng Xian's plea for help, Xin Lang couldn't remain indifferent. Yet the poem had to reflect his love for the Count's mansion and also display a pessimism about the future. Otherwise, it would give the game away. Xin Lang's deliberation lasted only a few seconds. He then verbally agreed. Zhang Chong gestured for him to proceed. Xin Lang closed his eyes and was silent for a moment. Then he began to recite. In the late evening, the lamp is not bright. Alone, I appear at the grand feast. The setting sun is infinitely beautiful, but it's about to fall into dusk. Upon hearing this, Zhang Chunhua was shocked and slightly opened her mouth. The poem not only matched the mood, but the use of the words for lamp, appear, not, and fall. Wasn't it a homophone for Deng Xian's innocence? The fourth prince internally marveled at the brilliance. He actually did it. Xin Lang's poetic talent is astonishing. Governor Zhu Rong felt the same. This poem perfectly conveys the situation Xin Lang himself is in. At this point, Xin Lang mentioned he was feeling unwell, saying they would meet again at the Isle of Gold Mountain in four days. With that, he turned and left. What they couldn't see was that on the other side, Xin Lang was already planning how to kill them in four days. After Xin Lang left, the banquet continued. Xu Lanting began his probing, signaling to the fourth prince and others, the fall of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is imminent. We should take in talents like Xin Lang into our residence. But the fourth prince slightly shook his head, saying his father did not like him, and thus ended the topic. This came as a surprise to Zhu Lanting, who had been worried that Xin Lang's talent might lead him to other influential figures, and that he might have to fear retribution. Now, with a single sentence about the sovereign's dislike, Xin Lang is doomed. Shortly after the banquet, within the Zhang family's old mansion, Zhang Chunhua was visibly furious. She thought the Zhu Lanting father and son deserved to die, feeling her father was blind. To want to marry her to Zhu Wenhua, seeing his daughter glaring at him, Zhang Chong felt helpless in his heart, lamenting that the situation is now completely different from before. The current situation has changed dramatically, with new policies sweeping away the old. Both the Northern Guard Marquis and Distant Guard Marquis, two major figures, have compromised. The old nobility is leaderless, already disunited. Zhu Landing's family is indeed no longer the best choice, so he also wanted his daughter to find another man she liked. Zhang Chunhua, unable to contain her anger, questioned her father. Do you think my heart is a toilet, allowing men to come and go as they please? I am unrestrained, but not promiscuous. Hearing this, Zhang Chang's face darkened as he covered his head, and Zhang Chunhua seriously asked her father, Father, is Xin Lang truly doomed? Zhang Chong shook his head. The sovereign's view of him cannot be changed. No one dares to employ him. Don't worry, your father will definitely find you a better man. Hearing this, Zhang Chunhua looked sorrowful. Ah, none better than Xin Lang are as interesting. You got me involved with him, and now the consequences have arrived. I fear even if I marry someone else, I'll still end up seeking him out for an affair. Zhang Chong, resigned, told Zhang Chunhua to stop being dramatic, and mentioned, Xin Lang's behavior tonight was problematic. Zhang Chunhua was puzzled. His last poem was a genuine expression of despair and desolation. However, Zhang Chong wasn't referring to Xin Lang's poem, but to Xin Lang's actions. He was too eager to save Deng Xian, a person facing certain death. How could he still be in the mood to save others? Deng Xian
Xian was just his publisher, they were acquaintances without emotional ties. Facing his own end, Xin Lang should have been extremely despondent, his senses numbed, a natural instinct of human nature, a mental self-defense. Yet, he cared about the life and death of someone irrelevant, so Xin Lang's behavior was very abnormal. Zhang Chunhua, after listening, felt her father made a lot of sense. However, the contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain is already without suspense. In the three contests of literature and martial arts, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is bound to lose. There's no doubt about that, right? Zhang Chong agreed with this point, so Zhang Chunhua thought that Xin Lang had already considered his way out. Once the mythical Turtle Count's mansion falls, he would be activated. Then, father, will you be able to spare Xin Lang's life when the time comes? Zhang Chong did not respond, leaving his intentions unclear. Meanwhile, Xin Lang returned to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Jean Mulan glanced at him and asked, Is Zhang Chunhua pretty? Xin Lang instantly opened his mouth, realizing Jean Mulan must have followed him. He immediately went behind Jean Mulan to massage her shoulders, never mentioning that Jean Mulan's action was to follow him. My lady, you are worried about my safety, so you've been protecting me in secret. You, you are so good to me. I am so moved. However, Jean Mulan just smiled and indicated, men occasionally going out to play their roles is understandable to me. As long as the heart is at home, as long as one does not stray in spirit, it's not considered strain. These words instantly made Xin Lang feel a chill down his spine. Thus, Xin Lang began his diversion tactic. My lady, I made a mistake today. Zhang Chong has been probing me, first sending Zhang Chunhua and then asking me to compose a poem. I handled everything without any mistakes, except for a small oversight that let Zhang Chong see some flaws. Jean Mulan's attention was successfully diverted. She looked at Xin Lang seriously. If I were in danger, I would save you first. These words moved Xin Lang deeply, holding Jean Mulan tightly in his arms. I feel the same, because you are more important to me than myself. No one can replace your place in my heart. However, Jean Mulan whispered in Xin Lang's ear. Then why does a teapot not match with just one teacup? Xin Lang tightened his grip on Jean Mulan's hand. Nonsense, my lady. I'm already doing my best to deal with you alone. How could I have the energy to bother with others? You really are overthinking. Jean Mulan, satisfied, playfully scolded Xin Lang as annoying. My lord, is it a problem that Zhang Chong saw some flaws? Xin Lang indicated it was not a problem. But just in case, we still need to make some arrangements. I hope no one will be targeted by my decisive actions. However, at the Zhang family's residence, they had already begun dividing up the spoils for after the fall of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Those present were essentially the main force against the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. For their own interests, they also started to vie for shares. Some wanted all of the mythical Turtle Count's mines, others wanted all the salt fields, and still others wanted thousands of acres of fertile land, among other things. If not satisfied, there was even a tendency to turn hostile. Zhang Chong watched this scene. He did not participate in the division, because no matter how the spoils were divided, the mythical Turtle Count's fiefdom and army were the sovereigns, and Zhang Chong did not want treasures, nor properties. He only wanted a future, specifically the position of governor of the glamorous province. The marriage between Zhang Ji and Miss Qi of the Qi family was already a certainty, just waiting for the right moment to announce. Then, with the wealth of the Hidden Origin Society, the position of governor was almost guaranteed. So, as long as the mythical Turtle Count's mansion falls, Zhang Chong would rise to a new peak of power. Meanwhile, inside the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, the sound of Jin Mutsong's constant scribbling could be heard. Xin Lang had given him topics and poems, which he had copied hundreds of times. He had memorized what needed to be remembered. Yet despite this, Jean Mutsong was still afraid, afraid of losing the Tang Yun and dooming his family's fate. Xin Lang, hearing this, comforted him. Losing is normal. Winning would be strange. You don't have to worry about this match. Xin Lang gave Jean Mutsong a bunch of portraits, telling Jean Mutsong to take a good rest. There wasn't much Xin Lang could do for Jean Mutsong, but easing his mood was still possible. Soon after, inside Jean Mulan's bedroom, even someone as strong as Jean Mulan were worried about losing to Tang Yan, worried about what to do if Tang Yan didn't use Meteor from beyond the heavens. Xin Lang patted her head. Don't worry, Mulan, follow my lead, and you won't go wrong. Initially, because of Xin Lang's tight embrace, Jean Mulan complained that it was uncomfortable, asking Xin Lang to loosen his grip. Xin Lang complied, but Jean Mulan then turned around and hugged Xin Lang tightly, anxiously asking him, my lord, everything is under your control, right? No matter what happens, you have a solution, so our family will definitely win, right? Seeing Jean Mulan in this vulnerable state, Xin Lang, with a smile yet firm tone, responded to her, in heaven and earth, across the seas into the wilderness. Only I am unbeatable. Jean Mulan immediately wiped her tears and exclaimed, in three days, we will definitely annihilate them. Time swiftly advanced to three days later, to demonstrate fairness. The contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain was set in the New River Hunting Grounds, a location unaffiliated with either the Jean or Tang families. The decisive three contests that would determine the fate of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion were to unfold here. Though nominally a hunting ground, it was actually a vast military camp. The competition between the two families attracted countless spectators, curious whether the mythical Turtle Count's mansion could survive.
survive. After all, from what was evident, the mythical turtle count was undoubtedly doomed to defeat. Of course, there were also those who disliked Jean Hai Count, considering that during the ancestors of the Jean family, Jean Hai Count was merely a dog. At this time, the referees appeared, and they were significant figures, because for the contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain, Xu Rong the governor could not serve as referee, nor could the fourth prince, who was to announce the sovereign's decree. The referees had to meet three criteria, highly virtuous and respected, top-tier nobility, and of a detached status. These three were, the former crown prince's grand tutor, the sovereign's uncle, and the head of Yu Kingdom's Ministry of War. Apart from the one still in office at the Ministry of War, the other two had long retired from politics, living their final years in peace, unable to refuse the sovereign's decree. Thus, they were present, but they were all of an age close to death. Everything else they could let go of, except their reputations. In short, this contest was to be absolutely fair and just. The mythical Turtle Count's families respectfully greeted each other. Father Jean understood in his heart. The sovereign deemed their Jean family undoubtedly doomed to defeat, and disdained to intervene. Subsequently, the rules of the contest were announced, whether in martial or military battles. Injuries and deaths were inevitable due to the dangerous nature of weapons, so signing a life and death agreement was required. In fact, the mythical Turtle Count and Jean High Count had clashed many times with numerous casualties. Even the heirs of both families faced uncertain fates. Two generations of heirs from the mythical Turtle Count's mansion died in contests, and Jean High Count's mansion had even lost three generations of young masters. Since then, Jean High Count learned his lesson, specifically selecting someone within the family to train in martial arts, but this person could not be the heir. Thus, Tang Yen, obsessed with martial arts, emerged. His existence was initially just for the Isle of Gold Mountain contest, but now, with his exceptional martial skills, he would become the next Southern Sea Sword King, a Grandmaster of Yu Kingdom. The contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain was no longer a concern for Tang Yen. At this moment, the Sovereign's uncle presented the literary contest topics, personally chosen by the Sovereign. Apart from the Sovereign, no one knew what the topics were. Father Jean and another were called forward to inspect the seal, ensuring it was intact. After verifying its condition, the box was kept by the three of them, to be officially opened only on the day of the literary contest. Jean Hai Count was indifferent. Jean Mutsong could not possibly be a match for his family's Tang Yun. Meanwhile, Shen Lang activated his perspective eye. Scanning the box, he was slightly surprised. I gave Jean Mutsong so many topics, and not a single one was a match. But no matter, your brother-in-law will soon help you draft a groundbreaking strategic essay, then a millennium-defining poem that will astonish everyone, including top scholar Tang Yun, and shock everyone. It's just that time is tight, and you'll have to stay up late copying furiously again. After both parties confirmed, a quarter of an hour later, the first martial contest will begin. Just two minutes before the contest started, Tang Yen was still curiously looking at a mosquito, simply because he had just failed to hit it. I think I need to study this carefully, to see if I can figure something out. His brother, Tang Yun, looked incredulous. Such an important match, and you're focused on a mosquito. But never mind, Jean Mulan won't be able to defeat him anyway. At that moment, Jean Hai Count reminded Tang Yen, you can defeat Jean Mulan and cripple her martial arts, but do not kill her. There are many important people interested in her. Also, absolutely do not damage her skin, or leave scars on her, as that would displease the important people. Would a wound as small as a hair be acceptable? Yes. To flap more than 2,000 times in a single breath, mosquitoes are indeed formidable. Time was up. It was Tang Yan's turn to enter the arena. When Tang Yan arrived at the New River Hunting Grounds Hall, Jean Mulan had already been waiting in the arena for a long time, and behind her sat people associated with the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Behind Tang Yan were the nobles who showed they did not oppose the new policies and submitted to the sovereign. As for the other side, it was the neutral seating, listening to Zhang Ji and Qi Yu predicting the winner. Zhang Chunhua scoffed disdainfully in her heart, very curious about what Shen Lang was planning. At this moment, Shen Lang's lips couldn't stop curving upwards. Jean Mulan, let these people truly witness your strength. With the sound of a drum, the first martial contest began. When Tang Yan saw Jean Mulan's beauty, he understood why his father had instructed him not to harm Jean Mulan. Even he, who had no interest in women, was stunned by Jean Mulan's appearance. In the next moment, Tang Yan unleashed the meteor from beyond the heavens, a technique perfected over tens of millions of sword swings throughout the years. Under his brother Tang Yan's expectant gaze, Jean Mulan drew a wooden sword, to the astonishment of everyone present. Jean Mulan's pupils dilated slightly, for she had found the eye of the storm and meteor from beyond the heavens, the sole flaw. Her wooden sword easily penetrated the wind pressure, striking Tang Yan directly. In an instant, meteor from beyond the heavens was broken, and Tang Yan was sent flying, crashing heavily to the ground. Jean Mulan had defeated Tang Yan in seconds, leaving the arena in utter silence, an outcome no one had anticipated, and all the more shocking for being accomplished with a wooden sword. Suddenly, the dropping of a water cup broke the silence. Jean Hai Kao was trembling, unable to believe they had lost. The crowd, too, snapped back to reality, their faces filled with disbelief. Tang Yan 
had been defeated by Jean Mulan, and with a wooden sword, Jean Mulan had been prepared to finish Tang Yin, but upon seeing his dazed expression, she decided to spare him. Perhaps we won't be enemies in the future, and I'm also somewhat thrilled. The unbeatable Tang Yin was defeated by me, and all thanks to my husband. But then Jean Mulan noticed Chen Lang, apparently exchanging flirtatious looks with Zhang Chunhua. Immediately, Jean Mulan's killing intent surged. However, 20 seconds earlier, Xin Lang had felt someone watching him. Turning around, he saw it was Zhang Chanhua, who even blew him a kiss. Really, flirting with me in front of everyone. Suddenly, Xin Lang felt someone else looking at him, and the gaze was filled with danger. Turning his head, he saw Jean Mulan. Xin Lang immediately knew he was in trouble, realizing that Jean Mulan had definitely seen that moment. He hurriedly began clapping and praising Jean Mulan to cover up his own inner guilt. At this time, Jean High Count was truly sweating bullets. He had never considered the possibility of losing the first match in the contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain. He even wondered if Tang Yin had taken a liking to Jean Mulan and thrown the match. Impossible. Tang Yin had no place for women in his eyes. Although Tang Yin was also sweating profusely, he still comforted his father. It's okay. It's a best of three contest. Losing one match doesn't mean anything. Despite this reassurance, Jean High Count's complexion was still pale. Amid everyone's shocked and astonished reactions, only Zhang Chong sensed something was terribly wrong, and he also understood why Shen Lang had revealed flaws at the previous banquet. Today, Shen Lang was even flirting with Zhang Chunhua without a hint of pessimism or despair, meaning he had absolute confidence in the remaining two contests. On the other side, Jean Mulan's cousin, Su Jianting, was also restless. How could Jean Mulan defeat Tang Yin if the mythical Turtle Count's mansion doesn't fall? How can I appear before Jean Mulan as a savior? If you don't fall into dust, how can I save you? I won't allow any man to succeed with a woman associated with me. At this moment, Father Jean approached Jean Mulan with a smiling face. Though happy, he was not overly excited, as if all this was to be expected. After all, the contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain was assured of victory, something Shen Lang had mentioned no less than 500 times. And on the field, Tang Yin had not yet recovered from his defeat. For 14 years, he had always been the one defeating his opponents in seconds. But today, it was his turn to be defeated in such a manner. Tang Yin once asked his master when he could learn sword techniques beyond meteor from beyond the heavens. He vividly remembered his master's reply. When you have been defeated, then consider learning other sword techniques. So, Tang Yin was not unable to accept his defeat. On the contrary, he was incredibly excited. Aha, I lost. I actually lost. Losing is good. To others, Tang Yan might seem overrated, but in Chen Lang's eyes, a grandmaster was about to rise. Today's defeat would only make Tang Yan stronger. Yet, Chen Lang was not concerned. For although Jean Mulan might not be a peerless genius, she had him by her side. She would surely become a top-notch master in the future. Beside them, the sovereign's uncle, Ning Chi, inquired. Marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Sua Xian. What do you think? I don't understand martial arts. I saw it as a poem. Mighty Duke, as a grandmaster and top martial artist, what is your opinion? Do you want the truth? Of course, the truth. Who in this world could make you, Mighty Duke, speak falsely? I've never been a fan of the meteor from beyond the heaven sword technique. All flash, no substance. But, in the future realm of martial arts, Tang Yan will surely have a place. At this moment, Ning Chi stood up. Mighty Duke, your insights are profound. Ning Chi then officially announced, the first contest of the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute is over, with the mythical Turtle Count's mansion victorious. Prepare, mythical Turtle Count's mansion and Jean High Count's mansion for the second and third battles tomorrow. However, after the first battle, Xin Lang faced Jean Mulan's judgment. Seeing Jean Mulan approaching, Xin Lang hurriedly admitted his mistake. My lady, I was wrong. I truly was. Please don't twist my hand. I still need to help Jean Mutsong with his essay. Or let's not fight here. Can we go home and discuss it slowly, please? Yet, yeah. Jean Mulan just bent down to look at Xin Lang. I won't hit you. It's a Jean family rule. A woman should not strike her husband. Hearing this, Xin Lang breathed a sigh of relief. But Jean Mulan suddenly leaned closer to Xin Lang, then opened her mouth and bit Xin Lang's face, signaling this as his punishment. Scoundrel husband, you need to behave, understand? Xin Lang nodded promptly. Then, Xin Lang accessed his brain's database, selecting an essay and a poem from the works of numerous literary giants to plagiarize. Next, he went to Jean Mutsong's room. Seeing Jean Mutsong writing furiously, he couldn't help but marvel. This young man types over 10,000 words a day. Terrifying indeed. He has the potential to become a great literary figure. Fatso, stop copying the old stuff. Copy these new articles and poems instead. This is what will be on the test tomorrow. Jean Mutsong was visibly delighted, but upon seeing Shen Lang's face, Shen Lang quickly interrupted him, bitten by your sister. What about it? Your sister loves me deeply, so she bit deeply, yet, she couldn't bear to really hurt me, much less leave a scar, hence this perfect tooth mark on my face. Listening to Shen Lang's utterly nonsensical explanation, Jean Mutsong was somewhat speechless. This is something you wouldn't understand. For someone like you, a homebody, apart from a dog, no woman would bite you. These devastating words transformed Jean Mutsong's sorrow and anger into power, and he began to copy frenziedly. Tang Yun, you just wait, so you're the
the top scholar. Ha! Huh? In tomorrow's literary contest, I must defeat you. I'll make sure you all understand. Homebodies are not to be trificked with. Homebodies can defy the odds. Maybe then, some young lady will fall for me. Meanwhile, at Jean High Count's location, they had already assumed Jean Mutson was bound to lose, so they shifted their focus to the military contest. Jean High Count was very confident about the military contest, thanks to his superior iron ore and forging techniques, naturally overpowering the equipment of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Zhang Chong agreed. He even secretly learned that Jean High Count had developed a new forging technique. Yet, that was still not enough. Defeating Shen Lang would not be that simple. Jean High Count took Zhang Chong to the armory where the war armors were stored, handing over a battle saber forged with the new technology for Zhang Chong to inspect. This saber surprised Zhang Chong, being even better than the equipment of the nation's most elite troops. Then, Jean High Count brought out the best battle saber from the mythical Turtle Count's mansion for a comparison. In a direct clash, the mythical Turtle Count's saber broke, while Jean High Count's saber only sustained a nick. They then tested it against the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's armor, cutting through it instantly with a single strike. This was the source of Jean High Count's confidence. Unbeknownst to them, Shen Lang had already upgraded their equipment. The armor and sabers Jean High Count was using were generations behind the current versions. Although Zhang Chong was unaware of these updates, he was still not at ease. To ensure no chance of failure, Zhang Chong asked Jean High Count to recruit additional experts from other nobles to be secretly mixed into their forces. Jean High Count was reluctant. Borrowing troops at this time, the cost will be significant. Zhang Chong immediately rebuked him for his short-sightedness. How significant can it be? Compared to the outcome of the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute, what is a little cost? Jean High Count, do not deceive yourself. As long as victory is assured, your Jean High Count's mansion will not suffer a loss. But if the first battle scenario repeats, then you'll be in trouble. With no other option, Jean High Count had to agree. But Zhang Chong also wanted to inform Ning Chi about this plan. Moments later, at the residence of the three judges, Zhang Chong told Ning Chi about Jean High Count's plan to borrow troops. Ming Chi was somewhat displeased. You shouldn't have told me this. I'm 78 this year. I don't want to tarnish my reputation at this late stage. After consulting with the other two judges, Ming Chi informed Zhang Chong. Zhang Chong, fairness and justice must prevail. Since Jean High Count can borrow troops, then the mythical Turtle Count's mansion can also borrow troops. He also warned Zhang Chong. The military contest is settled this way. Don't think about favoritism or fraud in the literary contest. The essays produced will be announced to the world. We do not wish to tarnish our reputations. Zhang Chong respectfully nodded in agreement. Subsequently, Jean High Count, at the cost of three sea ships and 3,000 acres of land, borrowed a total of 30 top military experts from the Northern Guard Marquis and Peaceful Stability Count. However, it wasn't Jean High Count's own land being offered, but the anticipated spoils from the downfall of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. As Jean High Count was organizing his forces, Su Jianting approached him. I have 10 military newcomers wishing to gain some experience in Jean High Count's mansion's forces. The conditions? None. Just purely for the experience. Hearing this, Zhang Chong and the others were astounded. Distant Guard Marquis' house is a leader among the old nobility, and also related by marriage to the mythical Turtle Count. You're not lending troops to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion but instead are kicking them while they're down? Distant Guard Marquis' house has stooped this low, while others demand immense benefits for lending troops. You're lending them for free? Zhang Chong did not refuse. Su Jianting merely smiled slightly. Upon seeing Jean Mulan, he decided she could only be his. The next morning, due to the weather, Ming Chi announced that the military contest would proceed first, with the literary contest to be held indoors in the afternoon. As Father Jean was preparing to leave, Ming Chi approached him, asking if he had any familiar friends within the hunting grounds. Father Jean, puzzled by the question, related to Shen Lang upon returning. Shen Lang immediately understood Ning Chi's hint. They should seek out experts from other nobles, suspecting Jean High Count had already broken the rules. Moments later, Shen Lang went to Jean Mulan's room, accidentally encountering her changing clothes. Shen Lang couldn't help but kiss Jean Mulan. Jean Mulan blushed and told Shen Lang to stop causing trouble. Annoying, don't delay me from changing my clothes. Shen Lang shook his head and told Jean Mulan, you don't need to change your clothes, you're going to the battlefield to participate in the military contest next. Jean Mulan was puzzled, I've already participated in one battle, I can't join another, the rules have already been broken by others, so you don't need to follow them either. Jean Mulan was furious, she had already prepared her formal attire, intending to dazzle everyone and assert her dominance with her appearance, but now, she could only warn Shen Lang. Then today, you're not allowed to look at other women, especially not to flirt with that vixen Zhang Chunhua. Seeing Jean Mulan getting ready to change into her armor, Shen Lang, grinning, took it and wanted to help Jean Mulan put it on, only to be rejected by her. Shen Lang was immediately displeased. Why? Jean Mulan explained. If my legs go weak, how will I fight later? This immediately cheered Shen Lang up. So that's why. It seems I'm too formidable. Meanwhile, at Father Jin's side, he had approached all the established nobles but failed to borrow even a single person. Father Jean was furious. A bunch 
bunch of short-sighted fools. Don't they understand the principle of when the lips are gone, the teeth will be cold? Shen Lang signaled to Father Jean not to worry. Those guys are smart, but whether they're being too clever by half remains to be seen. It won't be long before those people are kneeling before you, crying out about the lips and the teeth. Next was preparing for the military contest. Originally, it involved cavalry charges, which were too bloody even for the sovereign to bear, leading to a switch to infantry combat. Thus, all the Jean family soldiers participating in the battle were solemn and prepared for sacrifice, believing they might not return, but fearless even in the face of death. Because of the need for secrecy, Shen Lang hadn't distributed the new armor and sabers to them, keeping them in the dark. Once they saw the actual new equipment, their confidence soared. With Jean Mulan's command, change equipment, everyone uniformly began to don the new gear. Then, Shen Lang reminded Jean Mulan, be very careful, you must not sustain a single scratch on your body. Jean Mulan nodded at Shen Lang's words, and with a pat from Shen Lang, it was her turn to enter the field. On Jean High Count's side, everyone was fully armed and ready. Jean High Count's mobilization, all were spirited, shouting about crushing the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. However, as both sides took to the field, Jean High Count was stunned to see the mythical Turtle Count's army's equipment, which was completely different from before. Admiring Zhang Chang's decisiveness internally, if it weren't for the 40 experts we borrowed, and our new forging technology, we might have been the ones crushed. As the battle drums officially sounded, Ming Chi announced the start of the military contest. The clash between the mythical Turtle Count's army and Jean High Count's forces took everyone by surprise. What was expected to be a one-sided affair for Jean High Count turned on its head when their sabers broke upon striking the mythical Turtle Count's shields. Conversely, the mythical Turtle Count's blades sliced through Jean High Count's armor. Not just Jean High Count's forces, but also the mythical Turtle Count's army was in disbelief. Uninformed that their new equipment was so formidable, a counterattack ensued, and Jean High Count's forces couldn't breach the mythical Turtle Count's defense, rapidly losing numbers. This astonishing turn of events also dumbfounded Ning Chi and the other judges. Jean High Count was in shock, unable to comprehend the magic behind the mythical Turtle Count's rapidly improved equipment. Zhang Chong marveled at Shen Lang's uncanny abilities, good at poetry, writing, dying, charming women, and now even metalworking. What is it that you can't do, Shen Lang? Yet, yeah. Jean High Count's breaking of rules by inserting 40 top warriors into their ranks did have an effect, preventing a total annihilation by the mythical Turtle Count's army, and even managing some retaliation. Meanwhile, in the midst of battle, Jean Mulan heard a familiar voice. She quickly advanced and removed the man's mask, recognizing him as Su Tianan from the distant guard Marquis' house. Jean Mulan's anger surged instantly. So it's you. What exactly is your Su family trying to do? On the other side, Shen Lang and Father Jin's gazes both turned towards Su Jianting, while whispers of mockery reached Su Jianting's ears. After all, no one likes a traitor. Father Jean, suppressing his anger, ordered Su Jianting to go to Jean High Count's side, deeming him unworthy to sit with them. However, Su Jianting denied having anything to do with the matter. The battle on the field did not cease. The experts from Jean High Count's mansion were hesitant in their attacks on Jean Mulan, remembering Jean High Count's instructions not to harm her. Given the interest from significant figures, recalling Shen Lang's words, Jean Mulan thought, we are not afraid to lose this military contest, so protect yourself well. If defeat is imminent, just concede. But Jean Mulan was unwilling to do so, preferring the fight to the end. Winning the military contest would mean outright victory for them. Knowing his daughter's temperament, Father Jean proposed a draw for the military contest. Jean High Count disagreed, but the reality was that the mythical Turtle Count's side had about 70 people remaining, while Jean High Count's forces had fewer than 20. Even with more experts, a direct confrontation would likely result in the mythical Turtle Count's victory. But Father Jean, worried about Jean Mulan and compassionate towards his soldiers, did not wish to continue the fight. Despite this, Jean High Count still wanted to fight it out. Father Jean scoffed disdainfully. Of the remaining 20, how many are actually from your Jean High Count's mansion? Immediately, Father Jean declared, as long as the swords are raised, soldiers of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion will not attack. Hearing this, those on the field raised their swords to signal a ceasefire, since they were not Jean High Count's men and had no reason to risk their lives. With the situation resolved, Jean Mulan ceased her actions. After further consultation, the three presiding judges agreed to a draw. Jean High Count was furious. I paid so much for the military contest, only to end up with a draw. He knew, however, this was the best outcome. As long as Tang Yin won, it would be one win, one loss, and one draw, leading to a tiebreaker. Then it would come down to a battle between the mythical Turtle Count and Jean High Count. Confident in his martial prowess over the mythical Turtle Count, Jean High Count, albeit reluctantly, agreed to the draw in the military contest. Subsequently, he expressed his gratitude to Zhang Chong. Without his foresight, they indeed would have lost. However, while everyone else seemed assured of their victory, Zhang Chong did not share the sentiment and chose not to voice his doubts, preferring to take his leave. After all, being the only sober person among the intoxicated can lead to isolation, and he did not wish to end up completely friendless. Upon 
Upon returning to his residence, Xiang Chong pondered what he might have overlooked. Everyone believed Jin Mutsong couldn't surpass Tang Yun, including his son, Zhang Ji. The literary contest questions are sealed in a box, known only to the sovereign. How could Jin Mutsong have found a way to cheat? Yet, this question led Zhang Chong to recall Shen Lang's triumphs at the gambling house, sparking an unbelievable thought. Do you think it's possible that Shen Lang knew the literary contest questions in advance and prepared essays and poems for Jin Mutsong? Hearing his father's speculation, Zhang Ji was also taken aback. How could that be possible? Shaking his head at all the impossibilities, Zhang Chong concluded there was only one answer. He then asked Zhang Ji to call Zhang Chenhua. Shortly after her arrival, Zhang Chong inquired, Did you notice Shen Lang's expression at the end of the military contest? Zhang Chenhua recalled, When the mythical turtle count proposed a draw to stop the battle, Shen Lang seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, but then he frowned, realizing something was amiss. Zhang Chong asked, Is Jin Mulan the type to fear death? Zhang Chenhua denied, Jin Mulan is not afraid of dying. Rising suddenly, Zhang Chong pieced everything together. If Jean Mulan isn't afraid of death, her behavior is problematic. Today's military contest was a matter of life and death for the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. She should have disregarded her own safety. But as soon as a draw was proposed, she complied and ceased attacking, showing no intention of fighting to the death. Zhang Chenhua also realized the issue. Does that mean Shen Lang has a contingency plan for the literary contest? Zhang Chong nodded. Shen Lang must have known the literary contest questions in advance. Otherwise, Jean Mutsong couldn't possibly defeat Tang Yun. Zhang Chuanhua's expression hardened. Father, I agree with your assessment. After confirming his suspicions, Zhang Chong hurriedly went to Ning Qi's residence to share his conclusions. However, Ning Qi was skeptical. The seal and wax on the box haven't been tampered with. Is Shen Lang a deity, then, to know the questions in advance? Thus, Ning Qi was not willing to change the questions based on Zhang Chong's speculation. Yet, Zhang Chong did not give up. After leaving, he immediately sought out Zhu Rong the governor. Although Zhu Rong also doubted Zhang Chong's guess, the risk of losing was too great. But persuading Ning Qi would be challenging. Zhang Chong then proposed, the sovereign surely prepared a backup set of questions, sealed in an identical box. Your Excellency could accidentally damage the seal and wax under the guise of inspecting the questions. This way, for the sake of fairness and justice, Ning Qi would have to use the backup questions. Zhu Rong was shocked by this bold idea, but agreed with Zhang Chong's suggestion. As the queen's brother, even if Zhu Rong accidentally damaged the box's seal, Ning Qi could at most reprimand him without placing blame. Indeed, as Zhang Chong and Zhu Rong anticipated. After Zhu Rong broke the box by dropping it, he was admonished. Ning Qi had no choice but to switch to the backup questions, knowing well that Zhang Chong must have been behind this scheme. Seeing Zhang Chong kneeling outside, Ning Qi approached him, commenting profoundly, such a deep strategist you are. Zhang Chong, with his head on the ground, respectfully admitted, I am guilty. Ning Qi waved him off, signaling Zhang Chong could stand up, but Zhang Chong bowed deeply again without rising, repeating his admission of guilt. Ning Qi left him be. Stay kneeling then, under the looming clouds. The Ministry of War's head, Mighty Duke, approached Zhang Chong, praising, Zhang Chong, well done. Zhang Chong bowed once more. Witnessing this, Zhang Ji was thrilled. Mighty Duke holds significant sway over the position of governor in the glamorous province. Gaining his approval is excellent news. Under the flashing lightning and thunder, a torrential downpour drenched Zhang Chong, yet he refused to stand up, even rejecting the umbrella offered by Zhang Ji. Zhang Ji, puzzled, asked, Father, you did this for the sake of the reforms and the Ning royal family. Why demean yourself so? Zhang Zhang Chong scolded his son, naive, if you argue about right and wrong with your lord, you'll never get ahead. But then, why aren't those from Jin High Count's side here suffering with us? Zhang Chong retorted, how can you appear capable if your companions are not incompetent? Now go, stop fussing. A day in the rain won't kill anyone. Meanwhile, inside the New River Hunting Grounds Literary Contest venue, due to the need for a quiet environment for the literary contest, besides the contestants and the counts from both sides, only the three judges were present. After the counts inspected the question box, the contest began to Immediately, Ning Qi personally unsealed the box and took out the questions, allowing both heirs to start reviewing them. The first essay question was on the ultimate virtue of rewards and punishments, and the second was to compose a poem with Mythical Turtle as the theme. Seeing the questions, Tang Yin was disdainful. I am most proficient in these topics. Even if I took them to the imperial examination, I could secure the top scholar title again. However, Jin Mutsong appeared terrified. This is wrong. This isn't the two questions my brother-in-law told me about yesterday. Could he have miscalculated? Oh no. At that that moment, Jin Mutsong felt as if the sky had fallen. My plan to defeat Tang Yun is ruined. I might even be crushed into dust by him. Tang Yun, seeing Jin Mutsong's panic, felt contempt. Comparing literary skills with me, a top scholar, to such a useless person is truly beneath me. Just as Jin Mutsong was at a loss, he took a closer look at the questions. Wait a minute, I remember this. Isn't this one of the questions my brother-in-law anticipated? Shen Lang, aiming to grasp the sovereign's core interests, had input all known preferences, personality traits, and habits of the sovereign into his brain's database.
case, the brain successfully created a model of the sovereign as clever, radical, and sparing in kindness. One of the essay topics predicted by the brain was indeed the one presented, and the poetry topic was deduced from a deep analysis of the sovereign's view of the mythical turtle count. At this revelation, Jean Mutsong felt rejuvenated. Ha ha ha, I'm alive. I've come back to life. Brother-in-law, you almost scared me to death. Tang Yun, you just wait. This time, I'll crush you into dust. Subsequently, Ming Chi announced the literary contest would last for three hours, with everyone but the judges waiting outside. As the written examination began, Jean Mutsong eagerly wrote down all the answers from his memory, while Tang Yun composed his responses with calm deliberation. Ming Chi, watching, sighed internally. Poor kid, even if you're clueless, you should pretend to ponder before starting. Outside, Tang Yun sneered upon seeing Jean Mutsong's fervent writing, starting to write without even understanding the questions clearly. What a waste. But it doesn't matter. After all, victory is assured for the Tang family today. However, within a quarter of an hour, Jean Mutsong had finished writing the essay, or more accurately, copying it. Seeing this, Ming Chi and Sua Xian Marquis were incredulous. Finished the essay so quickly, it couldn't just be random scribbling, could it? Tang Yun, after spending an hour in thought before beginning to write, had already dismissed Jean Mutsong as less than trash. Shen Lang, today you will witness the literary grace of Yu Kingdom's number one imperial examination top scholar. As he wrote, Tang Yun became increasingly immersed, amazed at his own ability to produce such a brilliant piece, feeling it was unparalleled in history, even admiring his own work. After finishing, Tang Yun reviewed his essay three times. My god, did this perfect prose really come from me? Then, adjusting his emotions, Tang Yun stood, bowed to the judges, and submitted his work. On his way out, glancing at the still writing Jean Mutsong, he remarked, Waste, losing to me is your honor. Jean Mutsong continued to write his poetry meticulously, heeding Shen Lang's advice not to hand in his paper early, to avoid arousing suspicion. An hour later, he finally completed his poetry. Looking at his work, he felt immensely satisfied. Each word here has been crafted with my soul. Noticing Tang Yun had already left, he thought, that show off is gone, then I can submit my paper too. He then rose, bowed to the three judges, and, dragging his weary body, he left, his figure casting a particularly desolate shadow. After both participants had left, Ming Chi stood up and announced, the literary contest is over. The mythical turtle count and Jean Hai count may enter the examination hall. Upon Ming Chi's command, for eunuchs responsible for copying, and the two counts entered the hall. Ming Chi asked the counts to select a eunuch to copy the essays and poems of both participants, to ensure public transparency and fairness. The chosen eunuch first copied Tang Yun's essay, admiring and respecting the work as he did. However, before even starting to copy Jean Mutsong's essay, just by reading it, he showed a surprised expression. Tang Luan, watching from the side, expected this reaction. It seems that the literary talent of this count of the mythical turtle has thoroughly disgusted this young eunuch. After copying, Jean Mutsong and Tang Yun's original manuscripts were sealed for the judges to review later. The copied manuscripts were then given to the three judges for evaluation. Since Mighty Duke was a military man with less expertise in literature, Ming Chi and Sua Xian Marquis took the lead in reviewing. Opening one of the essays, Sua Xian Marquis couldn't help but exclaim at its quality, suggesting it would excel even in the imperial examinations. The poetry also earned his praise. Ming Chi, observing Sua Xian Marquis' reactions, assumed this must be Tang Yun's work. It seems the outcome is decided. Upon opening the other manuscript, Ming Chi was stunned from the first paragraph. The simple yet powerful language made an impact, impressing him greatly. After reading the essay, he eagerly moved on to the poetry. Even Mighty Duke noticed Ning Chi's reaction. Indeed, the phrase an old steed in the stable still aspires to gallop a thousand miles, and a dying hero's heart remains as ambitious as ever immediately resonated with Ning Chi. This line, grand and thought-provoking, is truly remarkable. It surpasses mere excellence, reaching a level worthy of reverence. Sua Xian then interrupted Ning Chi's contemplation. Ning Chi, you must see the essay I have. It's astonishing. After exchanging manuscripts, Ning Chi frowned upon reading. What is this? Though it seems fluent and elegant at first glance, compared to the previous one, it's rubbish. Sua Xian, upon reviewing the manuscript in his hands, was also shocked. My god, this is a timeless masterpiece, a classic for the ages. Mighty Duke, unable to contain his curiosity, stepped forward to examine the poetry and couldn't help but praise it. For a military man with little interest in literature to commend it so highly speaks volumes about the poem's exceptional quality. However, the judges faced a dilemma because the style of the work clearly differed from Tang Yun's, and it was unlikely Jean Mutsong could have produced such depth. After some consideration, Mighty Duke boldly speculated that Shen Lang was behind the submission, a notion Ning Chi agreed with, admiring Shen Lang's talent. The boundless romantic affairs was impressive enough, and now such essays and poems, such talent is wasted at the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, Ning Chi lamented. Sua Xian remarked on the realization that Shen Lang had indeed anticipated the exam topics, as Zhang Chong had suspected. Ning Chi concurred, this explains why Jean Mutsong could start writing immediately. Mighty Duke
questioned whether this amounted to cheating. It's not cheating. No one knew the questions beforehand, and it was indeed written by Jean Mutsong, was the consensus. Ming Chi was conflicted. Clearly, Jean Mutsong is the winner, but this will not only shock you kingdom, but also hand the Isle of Gold Mountain to the mythical turtle count, potentially against the sovereign's wishes. To rule Jean Mutsong as the loser, once these papers are made public, anyone literate can see the obvious disparity. This could tarnish not just our reputations, but label the sovereign as unjust. Moreover, if the sovereign can act against established nobles today, might he also cut royal allowances in the future? Deciding to play the elder card before the sovereign, Ming Chi aimed for a fair and just resolution of the literary contest. They then had the sealed original manuscripts retrieved and compared. Indeed, the superior work was attributed to Jin Mutsong, or rather, Xin Lang's handiwork, but Jin Mutsong's handwriting received praise. Sua Xian Marquis noted Jin Mutsong's writing lacked spirit and sharpness, but followed his father Jin was straightforward nature, predicting he would become a significant calligrapher. With a deep breath, Ming Chi looked to the other judges. Then, let's settle the literary contest this way. And they agreed. We follow Prince Uncle's decision. Outside the examination hall, despite the pouring rain, dozens to hundreds awaited the dramatic outcome, especially those flattering Jean High Count, hoping for crumbs from the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's defeat. Jean High Count mockingly suggested to the mythical Turtle Count, aren't you going to change? Put on your Jean family's latest gear for the upcoming duel. Ignoring him, Tang Luan's ridicule intensified. Does the mythical Turtle Count know he's going to lose, and thus isn't bothering to change? Despite Tang Luan's provocations, the mythical Turtle Count remained calm, meditating with eyes closed, trusting in his son-in-law and son to secure victory. The literary contest was already beyond doubt, yet the mythical Turtle Count's silence only invited mockery from those around him. Jean Mutsong, on the verge of exploding with anger, still held back. Wait till the results are out. I'll make sure your faces swell. I may not be capable, but I have an incredible brother-in-law. Is copying from one own family really considered copying? Suddenly, someone taunted. Mythical Turtle Count, don't be upset. After all, you haven't had control over the Isle of Gold Mountain for years. You should be used to it by now. This comment turned the Mythical Turtle Count's face ashen, and Jean Hui and others nearby were barely able to restrain themselves from retaliating. As tensions escalated, Prince Uncle Ning Chi and the judges emerged to announce the results. Stepping into the rain, they declared the winner of the literary contest for the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute. Son of the Mythical Turtle Count's mansion, Jean Mu Song. The announcement stunned everyone, particularly Tang Luan. How could his son, a top scholar, lose to a fool? The mythical Turtle Count, though smiling outwardly, silently relieved a weight from his heart. Amidst the shock, Jin Mutsong's triumphant yell cut through. Where are you, Tang Yun? I told you I'd crush you, I'd defeat you swiftly, and now I have. Ha ha. Tang Luan, drenched, approached Prince Uncle to question if there had been a mistake. Ning Chi, understanding his disrespect, did not reprimand him, but simply restated. Let me announce it again. In the third literary contest, Jin Mutsong wins. Tang Yun loses. Did everyone hear clearly this time? Tang Luan was devastated, realizing the Tang family's loss meant losing a significant portion of their wealth and wondering how to sustain his private army without it. In a fit of rage, he accused the contest of being unfair and insinuated foul play, pointing at Jin Mutsong. Everyone knows what Jin Mutsong is like. How could he possibly beat Tang Yun, the Imperial Examination's top scholar? His comments incited the Tang family's followers to chant about injustice and suspected cheating. As the situation descended into chaos, Mighty Duke's thunderous roar silenced the crowd. Seeking death! Suddenly, no one dared to say another word in the presence. Ming Chi, seeing Jin High Count daring to publicly question him, was also very annoyed. He immediately ordered to have the articles of Jin Mutsong and Tang Yun posted for public display, so that everyone could see for themselves whether there was any private cheating or not. Soon, the guards publicly displayed the articles, and instantly, everyone crowded in front of the posting board. However, Jin High Count didn't even bother to look at it, insisting that Prince Uncle was cheating and he would not accept it. Ming Chi, pointing at the public notice board, angrily said, Jin Mutsong's article this time is far superior to Tang Yun's. It's clearly posted on the wall now. Anyone who has read a bit can see the difference. If you don't accept it, then go complain to the sovereign. I am ready to accompany you at any time. But Ning Chi's face darkened. If anyone continues to make trouble now, don't blame me for the sharpness of my knife. If anyone dares to continue making trouble, take them down immediately. Upon this order, all Blackwater platform guards drew their swords and stood off, scaring everyone present silly. And Jin High Count, seeing this, could only be angrily silent. Meanwhile, inside Tang Yun's room, he was pretending to be carefree, holding a book, waiting for the news of his victory. Though he appeared to be reading, in reality, he was fantasizing about the shocked expressions of the three dignitaries upon reviewing his strategies and poems, firmly believing he would surely win the literary battle against Jin Mutsong and that the Tang family was certain to win the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute. Just then, a servant rushed into the room in a panic. Tang Yun, pretending, flipped 
a page of the book before casually scolding, what's the fuss about? It's just beating that useless Jean Mutsong. What's there to make a fuss about? However, the servant said with a trembling voice, young master, you lost. Tang Yun's gaze turned cold. How dare you joke about this? The servant quickly explained, young master, it's true, you lost. Tang Yun angrily stood up and closed the book. How could I possibly lose to Jean Mutsong? This is absolutely a huge mistake. Seeing Tang Yun angry and disbelieving, the servant quickly knelt on the ground, urging him to see for himself at the scene. Moments later, the two braved the rain to arrive at the posting board. He first carefully examined his own paper. Yes, it was indeed his own, but he couldn't understand why such an excellent work lost to Jean Mutsong, the fool. However, when he saw Jean Mutsong's articles and poems, he was completely shocked. They lacked fancy words, but had much deeper implications, and the poetry made him feel utterly ashamed. At that moment, he fully admitted defeat, as did the entire Tang family, losing the Isle of Gold Mountain competition. Moreover, he could even foresee becoming the laughingstock of everyone from then on. Such a talented top scholar to lose to a fat house. Jean Mutsong. Just then, a bolt of lightning flashed, and Tang Yun stood dumbfounded in the rain, motionless until he heard the concerned inquiry of a servant beside him. He snapped back to reality, but the servant's kindness made him very embarrassed. He turned around, angrily telling the servant to scram. After the servant ran away, Tang Yun lowered his head, letting the merciless ice rain hit him. No, this can't be Jean Mutsong's own work. It must be Shen Lang. It must be him. Thinking this, Tang Yun opened his arms and roared crazily towards the sky, filled with resentment and pain. A gentleman must avenge his wrongs. Shen Lang, you and I are irreconcilable. I will have you torn to pieces. The scene shifts to Shen Lang's resting place. Shen Lang, too, was pretending to read a book like Tang Yun. At this moment, he showed that annoyingly smug expression again. I just want to be a good-for-nothing son-in-law living off my wife, but you all force me to show my unparalleled talent. How annoying. Just then, Jean Mutsong ran in, rushed and excited. Brother-in-law, I won. I completely crushed Tang Yun. Shen Lang just took a sip of tea indifferently. So, you won. Isn't that to be expected? However, Jean Mutsong playfully scolded Shen Lang for fooling him, because the exam topic wasn't what he told him last night, but was the strategies and poems he had memorized before. Hearing this, Shen Lang was so surprised he spit out his water. Jean Mutsong still cluelessly asked, What's wrong, brother-in-law? Shen Lang quickly covered up his embarrassment. What was today's topic? Jean Mutsong thought for a moment. It was the strategies and poems about the utmost and penal loyalty, and the mythical turtle that you had me memorize. Shen Lang was stunned. How could this be? I clearly used x-ray vision to see the exam topic. How could it suddenly change? He realized he had shown his hand in the military strategy game because he had made Mulan too conservative. After all, Jean Mulan, who has always regarded family honor as her life, why would she fight so cautiously in this military game? Zhang Chong, your thoughts are indeed very profound. You sensed something was wrong in the second military game, so you had Jean High Count borrow elite warriors, and then you sensed a crisis in the literary contest, prompting you to ask Ming Chi to change the exam topic. You almost turned the tables. Thankfully, the heavens were on my side. At this moment, Shen Lang also felt a wave of fear inside, and Jean Mutsong, seeing his brother-in-law's changing expressions, asked him what was wrong. Shen Lang quickly laughed it off. Nothing, nothing. I just think you did a splendid job this time. Unaware Jean Mutsong wanted to boast some more to his brother-in-law, but Shen Lang got up and walked outside, saying, the real battle for the Isle of Gold Mountain has just begun. Next, we'll start with the Orchid Mountain Viscount. The three battles for the Isle of Gold Mountain have ended, but the sky was still filled with lightning and thunder, and the heavy rain seemed not to stop. Inside the residence of the three dignitaries, Zhang Chong was still kneeling in the courtyard under the pouring rain, while Zhang Ji and Zhang Chunhua, unable to persuade their father, knelt behind him. Zhang Chong said, Zhang Ji can stay here with me. Zhang Chunhua, you go back. Zhang Chunhua immediately retorted, I am also a member of the Zhang family. How can I just stand by and watch if my father is suffering here? Zhang Chong scolded, you, a girl, dressed so thinly, getting soaked by the rain. What kind of decency is that? Reminded by her father, Zhang Chunhua realized she was soaked through, her clothes sticking to her body, almost as if she was wearing nothing. She then ran towards the house. A moment later, hearing a thud behind him, Zhang Chong looked back to see Zhang Chunhua wrapped in a raincoat, continuing to kneel in the rain with her father. Zhang Chong was quite comforted by this. Unity in a family is the most important thing. Although his children have many faults, just the virtue of filial piety was enough to smooth over these faults in his heart. More than an hour later, the three dignitaries returned to their residence and were stunned to see Zhang Chong and his children still kneeling in the courtyard. This is the heavy rain at the end of autumn. The Zhang family kneeling in this cold rain for hours must be suffering, especially the little girl, Zhang Chunhua, also getting drenched. Seeing this, Ming Chi quickly walked up to Zhang Chong and said, Zhang Chong, I am no longer angry. Please, get up and take your children back home. However, Zhang Chong still refused to rise because he knew that he was not only seeking to appease Prince Uncle's anger but also wanted to be punished for his own mistakes. Seeing this, Ming Chi sighed and said, Zhang Chong, your guess is correct. Shen Lang might indeed have no 
known the exam questions. Even though we switched to the backup questions, Jean Mutsong still won the final battle. The mythical Turtle Count's mansion has won the final victory. Hearing this news, Zhang Chong was struck as if by lightning. His gaunt face twitched violently, and before he could speak, he blacked out and collapsed to the ground. Zhang Ji and Zhang Chanhua were terrified and rushed to awaken their father. Ming Qi, unable to bear seeing him lying in the rain, instructed them to quickly carry Zhang Chong back inside to rest. However, Zhang Chong soon regained consciousness on his own, but his complexion was ashen, and his lips were purple, looking utterly defeated. Yet, in just a moment, he regained his composure and simply said, Thank you, Prince Uncle, and then continued to kneel rigidly without moving. The three dignitaries were shocked to receive such a blow and yet recover so quickly and regain his fighting spirit. We never imagined there could be such a resilient person in the world. Reluctantly, Ming Qi had to lower his stance. Lord Zhang Chong, I beg you, please stop kneeling. The wrong one is not you, it's me. Then he ordered his men to forcibly take him back to his residence. Not long after returning, Jin Hai Count arrived with a group of people seeking to see Zhang Chong but was blocked by Zhang Ji at the door. However, seeing their opportunity slipping away, they refused to give up and started shouting outside the door, demanding that Zhang Prefect come out to restore justice. Seeing they couldn't stop these people from causing a commotion outside, Zhang Chunhua stepped out and said, My father is indeed unwell. Let me convey a message to you all. We have lost this round. Do not linger in battle. We must immediately move to the next round. Do not act rashly. Wait until I have carefully considered our next step. Everyone, upon hearing Zhang Chunhua's message, was at a loss and didn't know how to react. Then, before they could respond, Zhang Ji closed the door, telling them their father needed rest and asking them to come back another day. Seeing that Zhang Chong had completely given up on this round, Jin Hai Count was also extremely annoyed. Since you, Zhang Chong, won't come forward, then we will find our own solution. Meanwhile, at the mythical Turtle Count's mansion residence, everyone was raising their glasses in celebration of the victory. Laughter and cheerful voices filled the entire place, with everyone loudly proclaiming the son-in-law and the heir as incredible. From now on, the Isle of Gold Mountain would belong to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. In the study, the family of the mythical Turtle Count was holding a secret meeting. However, in the midst of their intense discussion, Shen Lang noticed that Jean Mutsong had already fallen asleep. Fatso, what are you doing? Brother-in-law, I find it boring to listen. Can I copy books here instead? Shen Lang was speechless. You fathead, you just defeated top scholar Tang Yun, and you're still thinking about writing? Can't you aim for something higher? But seeing his father-in-law's face about to explode with anger, Shen Lang could only wave his hand in agreement to his request. Watching Jean Mutsong leave happily, the three people present could only sigh internally. Then getting back to the matter at hand, Shen Lang said with a serious expression, although we seem to have won the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute, the real fight to the death is just beginning. Having secured this initial victory, we can now turn from defense to offense. The next step is the Cliff Watch Island strategy. We've won the Isle of Gold Mountain, and everyone will think we'll deploy all our strategic resources here to maintain ownership, but we must not do so. We will neither station troops nor develop it. I want to turn the Isle of Gold Mountain into a meat grinder, draining every drop of the enemy's blood. Of course, the enemy won't just sit around waiting to be slaughtered, and they're certainly plotting a sinister scheme right now.